very watching if that's like like if you can't hear it at all and she turned it up a little bit, you know. If man babe like watches live feed so somebody says that it says something. So don't let me know. Real quick, I just gotta give a shout out to all my all my brothers of the uh, Basic Club. Yeah, that's what's up to Skeet last night if you missed it was a hell of an episode on the Bloody on the Mat. Uh, shout out to the Lily Twins for stopping by and dealing with the insanity. Holy shit. Um, you know, much love to Wicked, new member of his family, right? And uh, fucking, uh, Monica will be back next episode, yeah, as well as you can catch him. Um, because relapse is coming up, but, but that's not the point right now, right? I mean, let me take that away, right? Wait, I don't want to get to that yet, man. Look, I fucked my shit up. Why is that? It needs to be, like, way lower, right? It does. Right? Because I fucking, whatever, because I fucking had a lot of late. You know, there was late. Ladies and gentlemen. Right? Yeah, fucking. Yeah. Check that next day. Yeah. Get a hold of Demonic, myself, or a couple other motherfuckers. Can uh, jump on that mixtape, you know what I'm saying? It's 30 bucks to get a beat. Uh, we've got several producers lined out to fucking get beats. Uh, we've got all that shit lined out, fucking so if you need it, it's not a problem. If you got one, it's just 10. It's gonna be fucking, we're gonna make uh, 100 copies, physical copies, and sell them online as well as it'll be available uh, digitally for free. There's that shit, alright? So if you wanna jump on that, uh, hope to have it out probably this beat again next year, maybe? I don't know, fucking. We're working on that shit, right? It's getting done, right? Contact myself, demonic, or toxic ill. Right, and then there's this. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna blow this up bigger. It's not big enough for me. I want, I want it bigger. Oh, I'll cover. I'll cover. What? The what? Oh, what's up, Black Madison artist? That's... Wait. No, hold on. This is BA. Yeah, we'll call you BA for short. Yeah. Check it out, though. Right? Fucking what? Isn't it 15 bucks? 15 bucks, ship. Yeah. You can get yourself one of the first pressings in the No Fuck Skipper Radio t shirts. Alright, as well as my uh, debut, The Birth of the Unknown. And I'll ship that shit wherever the fuck you want it. Right? 15 bucks. Those shirts are limited presses. Next time we print that shit, it, even if we put the shows on the back, it's gonna be different. And, and we're probably not gonna put the shows on the back. Holy fuck, baby. Imagine if we fucking did that again. Like, we, we can't. Like, cause we've, you couldn't list all the fucking shows at this point. Yeah, which is dope, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. And we'll get to that here in a moment, right? Again, I'm the Unknown Factor, No Fucks Given Radio. If I haven't said that, I don't know if I did. Whatever. I mean, it is the No Fucks Given Radio live stream, though, so I hope you'd at least know that part. I don't know, though. Maybe you just ran across it, though, because my wife shares shit everywhere. Yeah. Uh, remove this. Get that, though. 15 bucks. Ship. Just fucking send us a message, right? But it's coming up, man. Beyond that, I just got to say, coming up, we got fucking on the No Fucks Given Hour. We got green jelly coming up. Jello. See, I fucked up because I was looking at it and they had to change it because legal issues. Because fucking. Because. Yeah, but who, I know, but who was it that was fucking with him? It was Kraft. Kraft. Kraft Jello was fucking with him. And they were like, ah, whatever. They just changed it. Yeah, but it's still Jello. But it fucks with me, man, because if I'm looking at it, it looks like jelly. So I'm sorry, bro. The dope shit. I love it from way back, right? We got them coming up, right? On the No Fucks Given Hour. This motherfucking Thursday, right? And then, and then what else we got, man? This is like, this shit is, I gotta, I gotta, hold on, I gotta remove. Oh, yeah, wait. We got booty for the babies. Yeah, you wanna catch me live, ladies and gentlemen, out? You know, my fucking madness. You see Steve Burton? Steve Burton's gonna be in the motherfucking house, right? Booty for the motherfucking baby. That shit's gonna be dope, right? That's fucking Friday, you know, Ohio. Get your ass out. Look, it's for a good cause. You bring a toy, you get 50% off the ticket. That's four. So it's four bucks if you bring a toy. Go to a dollar store. Get the fuck toy for a dollar. Show up at four, and you get in. That's five dollars to get in. See some fucking dope ass acts, man. What? Who? Steve Burton? Who sucks? Steve Burton suck? My wife's saying, Steve, my wife's saying that you're saying that you say you suck. I'm just saying. Right? 
I could even confuse my kiddo in the background. All right. But again, we got green jello coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And that will be this motherfucking Thursday, the 7th. But, right? But then, then moving forward, like I said, we got booty for the baby. You can catch us live. Right? We'll be in the fucking building that night. But then, Thursday, or coming up Tuesday, man, on the motherfucking. Wait, what? Yeah, 12. See, I fucked my shit up, so I fucked my shit up a little, so a little, a little slow, but whatever. It's 12, right? Talk snuff. And, man, fucking Lynch is straight gonna be coming from the fucking insane assassination tour. That's, yeah. So, from the road, ladies and gentlemen, talk snuff with Team Snuff. He's from the motherfucking road this week. So, I look forward to that. It's gonna be a pleasure to fucking, like, Fucking uh, welcome everyone. This is a hell of a tour. You got insane poetry. You got Lucky the Assassin. Uh, Grave dogs on that shit. Karma. I think that's right, bro. If it's not, I'm sorry. All right, but but see, you got that. So go away. No man. See, see, is, is it not gonna give me the next motherfucking picture I want? Cause here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Right. That's what's next. I should blow it up a little because it looks weird like that in the corner. Boom. Right? Yeah, that freaking fucked up Fear Hour. Holiday edition. Yeah, that's right. We're going to review Santa Slay, Krampus, and motherfucking Silent Night. That new remake. Not that old shit. Just so you know. Yeah. That's myself, Chuckles, and motherfucking Elmo. Yeah. And, yeah. It's going to be a holiday edition. That shit's going to be stupid. I ain't even going to lie. I don't think it'll get as stupid as last night. Last night with the Looney Twins got pretty fucking ridiculous just right off the get-go. But it was still a hell of a show in my opinion. Right? Right? But the next night, motherfuckers, on the 14th, right? We got the convalescents first. Yeah, coming up. Check that out. It's gonna have them fucking rocking that metal shit. You know, I'm gonna chill with them for a while because they're gonna start at 8. Then, that same motherfucking night, I'm gonna motherfucking kill this shit, not doing what I told it. I said remove. Yeah, that's right. God's Chaos. 9 o'clock that night. Then we're gonna fuck with the God's Chaos. Get into that chaos shit, man. And fucking that all on, on the no fucks given with some chaos shit. That's bound to be fucking nuts. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is episode 199 of the No Fucks Given Out. Alright? 199 episodes. Right there. Right there. And man, uh, we, we kind of, as we shit happened, we both, you know, hit us up. I was like, it was just that time when we were about to line up the 200th episode. And I was like, that be dope. I, I, I want that for the 200 fucking episode. Because I respect the fuck out of this man. As an MC, as a man that grinds where he is. Uh, I mean, look, I got mad love for Magic Ranger, the whole company. <laughs> Always puts on a hell of a show. I've had the fucking privilege of opening for him uh, a couple times. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Magic Ninjas Lex the Headmaster for episode 200 of the No Fucks Given Out. We'll be welcoming him, and I look forward to that. We're going to pick his mind just like we do everyone else's, though, all right? It's just like we do everybody else's, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a blast. I look forward to it. I know the man's got stories, and we're going to fucking get into it, right? But, but, here's the thing, though. Really, ladies and gentlemen, what it's about is tonight. Super Nerd Kingdom. Yeah, myself, Chris Excess Cash, and Mr. DKB. You know, my wife ain't got that line set up where you can call in. I just realized that. So if you seeing that and you trying to call in, motherfucker, hold on. It see, it's just like literally a couple of clicks of button, you know. So I'll do that shit. I will. That way, y'all can call in, All right? Fuck. DKB Eraser might be watching this. Me, I'm like, asshole, why can't why the fuck I call in? I hear you your goddamn track. Participant on the call. Please hold uh, while we wait for the whatever. to join. Hey, ain't nobody. Uh, ain't nobody fucking on there. Really? You know, uh. Yeah. But hey, like I said, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, well, that's what it's about. It's fucking uh 
Troy Hickman stopping by. Yeah, it's been two-time Eisner nominated, right? Was winner, one of the two winners of the 2008 Top Cow uh, search, which I, I, I never participated in. But I gave great thought to, I will say that. So it's dope as fuck to have somebody on tonight that was one of the winners in 2008. Um, we're going to pick his mind about all kinds of shit. Because that's what the fuck we do. You know. But, oh, Lando's in the house. What's up, bro? Yeah. But I'll be real honest. Right now, while this is going to go to Super Nintendo, I've just been running like fucking mad promo. If you go like... Like, when this fucking video ends, if you go back and watch the beginning of it, it's just five minutes of me promoing the fuck out of everything, right? What, promoing the fuck out of everything? I'm still gonna be, yeah, I'm not done promoing the fuck out of everything. I gotta do so much fucking promo, I need to light a goddamn cigarette. Hmm. I'm gonna leave that there, because that's tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, that's good right there. Oh, wait, let's... Yeah. Had to move it up just the hair, right? But it's good right there, right? That's where, that's where we're gonna fucking, yeah, yeah. I, I fucking, yeah, yeah. We already got to that. And it's gonna be awesome. Like I look forward. Look, ladies and gentlemen, four more episodes, four more episodes. Still episode 200 of the No Fucks Given Out. Um, and, and they're all gonna fuck, man. The guests. That's I I really that's a dope lineup of guests in my opinion. There's a there's a nice fucking variety there, you know, which is what I like to think we try and do over here. Fuck me, I mean we can't be, ain't keep it normal. I hope my wife's watching to see she ain't watching to see the comments either. Oh oh she's trying to show you. See I'm making it tricky because I just got to sit here and go ah like a madman putting the antenna thing. I'm also running ten things so fuck off. Call me, you know, out there watching Facebook world. Give me a call. Oh, but hey, oh, shit to promo. Shit to promo. Oh, if y'all got shit to promo, call. Yeah, but hey, babe, I want to promo something. Play that. Play that. Because wait, 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 wait. Oh, you ain't got that shit pulled? That's mean as fuck. Wait, hold on then. Hold on real, real quick. I just got to say. All that radio shit going down. Ladies and gentlemen, I love it. No fucks given radio. That's right, right? But keep in mind, I'm the unknown factor. And I'm a host. And I'm C. Just an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. Press play, babe. Yeah. Like, lyrically, it was all cool. Nuts. Noose. I said nuts. She said noose. It's a I'm long intro. I said I don't give like a fuck. Like press record. Fucking fat, like damn it. it. Holler. I'm Dope. Dope. Whatever. You're starting. You're like, what the hell is he talking about? I fuck fuck I don't know. Ah! Cause like, nah, nah, shh. Oh, I'm not supposed to Man, look, she like, she like trying to say shit when I ain't trying to say shit. Like, what the fuck is that shit? It'll have two Man, yeah, there's, there's going to be two motherfuckers up on that though. Yeah. All I'll say, I will, I will, the only hint I'll give, they're past guests of No Fucks Given Hour. Ha 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 only like. Or you can go back and try to yeah. return. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, see, but fuck the fake. You're a fucking pain in my ass, babe. It's a pain in my ass, ladies and gentlemen. She really is, yeah. But that, that's gonna be on my next shit. Yeah, it's back to 316. Yeah, that's coming whenever the fuck I want it to. 
that's that's kind of how I do shit, right? You know, we got a lot of other shit coming up here, radio. We got my shit coming up musically. Um, I got a lot of shit in the works, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Noose. All that fucking beat and fucking the mixing shit and like, well, not the mixing on that. That shit, that shit's fucking like, nah, man. Deuce ain't had his hands on that like that. Except the beat. The beat's fucking Deuce. But short of that, he ain't had his hands in it, really. You know, I did a couple little things, but I ain't, I ain't no fucking producer, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't gonna lie to you and tell you that shit. Because it'd be a little ass none. Nobody's calling. Look, I swear people are commenting and you ain't reading to me. Like there's like. Jesus a, said he'll call when he gets a uh, signal again. The Wi-Fi burns through his battery like a bitch on his dick. Like Wi-Fi calling. Burns through a battery like a bitch on his dick. <laughs> oh, like, like it. That's interesting. Like, why does why does that why does that burn through your dick, dude? I don't think that should burn through your dick. I don't know if that's a that's a little well, yeah. Cause like I don't think I don't know who you fucking with, bro. But like maybe you do need to go fuck with Toby. You know, hopefully she ain't got nothing like that. Cause whoever you fucking with, that ain't normal. I'm telling you now, babe. That ain't normal. Yeah, I mean it. <laughs> yeah, no, them is just facts. All right. I mean, if you want to say Dr. Factory, what the fuck ever, but, no, nah, that shit ain't normal, alright, it shouldn't happen, it's the fucking truth, alright, um, man, I like, stop my background music, I'm gonna, I like my background music, my background music, just so y'all know, is go fucking skipping radio, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I'm gonna finish adjusting rotation one day. It's just become way more of a massive effort than it used to be. I swear to God, and it becomes more and more of one. Um, but yeah, I'm about to switch a couple things up. We're gonna add a uh, hip hop, horrorcore, and metal hour. Just boom! All at once. That's what I'm gonna do. I got it all fucking scheduled out. I just haven't gotten through all the artists yet. I think I'm at like K. <laughs> Yeah, and fuck, I need, yeah, and I need to, and there's like fucking two or three guys I really need to add their shit in, Gordy, I am fully gonna get your shit in, I gotta, so yeah, I mean, so, we gotta do that, we're, we're fully at works on that shit though, ladies and gentlemen, it's just a process, you know, but it is a process that will be done, um, I just got fucking music to work on too, personally, like I said, trying to get some collab shit done, you know what I'm saying, fucking, if you just heard that track, I don't know, fucking, I look forward to fucking hearing them guys get me back on that shit. But again, tonight is really, it's fucking what it's about. It's fucking Troy Haven, man. We're going to have him by, right? Super Nintendo, episode 10. Then we're going to do some fucking, you know, we got that battle coming up. Ah, shit, I didn't set that fucking graphic up. Mama said don't trust nobody, so I don't trust nobody. I won't be a nobody. Look, so you get to just see me do something on the live. Because if I don't just do it like this, I might do it at some point. So, fuck it. Might as well do it. I don't trust nobody. I don't even know what that shit ain't in here. Cause I fucking moved that bitch or something. Yeah. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. That's the fucking That's the fucking truth. I said fucking. I, I went all the way to fucking in this shit. I'm going to need love in the sky. Watch the niggas scatter like fire. Uh, I don't need those ones. Let me just get fucked up. Fear out. Yeah. Which I recommend you tune in to the fucking holiday episode. I'm going to get my kiddo to watch these holiday horror films. She said no. That's wrong. Even if the pissed off. I'm just gonna watch him, I'm telling you. I'm chasing the shit. She said no though. But I can't do it better. I'm making it rain. I was like, how do you not want to see Santa? Like fucking murder people. That's awesome. I ain't never been about that shit. I'm just gonna gonna straight murder some motherfuckers. Alright, so we're gonna put that there. We gotta move this shit all the way. Stop smiling all in my face. 
No yeah. trust funds, no pillows, nigga. That's money. Stuff normally, in that case. Yeah, I forgot about the right couple thing, niggas. I'm gonna put myself right in the middle. Like, I'm fucking. Like, yeah, I'm fucking. Like, fucking. Don't throw them in, brother. Silver Sugar in that thing he gave me. He said, Should've known better than me. But I'm not Monica. Smoking harmonica. Somehow they seem to make life feel beautiful. Dirt in my cubicles, fresh out the mud. Dirt in my drink, my codeine in my blood. Speaking of blood, my family be tripping. My cousin a snitch and a hoe in a fro. We had him. We had him on us, man. I think maybe we should have him. Like, really? It's devastating just right. to grow around yeah. such ignorance with no feeling. I don't want to change <coughs> we'll this little little, but I don't expect you to feel me. I want you, you to know together, everyone tonight, together, everyone tonight, but I really think you would have killed me. Mom, look at that shit. Trust nobody, so like, I don't trust nobody. that never happens on this fucking show. It don't. Where everyone's from one state. Yeah. Tonight, everyone's from the same fucking state tonight. You can't even fucking see a reason on that wire. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. It's fine. I don't give a fuck. Right. This is how we're leaving it. Right. So when we get to this point, this will be the end of the show. When we get to this, we discuss. I don't remember if we're going to say that. Jehovah building, I'm a villain. Black oh, no. empire against the young floor to live in my world. I, I think like that thing he can be said. Like saw was in it. I think that thing he can be said. I got that. And said the plus I hate plus all your goon here. You lost. Come put the bread up. I swear I'm a good guy. You're a fucking cross. It hurt to fail. Yeah, Godzilla. Look at the fucking thing. And like, I guess, like, a lot of guys. Shadow was closest. What shit would back up? That's the ghetto camp monster. Don't trust us, but I'm. Is anybody talking to me? Or is everybody just listening to me ramble? Who? Eh, yeah, who is? Really? Alright, so everybody's just listening to me fucking ramble. Nobody wants to call in. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm, uh, I'm a make you just call DKB and race it right now. You wanna? Why not? They'd be like, well, they'd be like, huh? They'd be like, you fucking asshole. You're just starting the show right now. I'd be like, yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. For real. Um, so, yeah, man. You know what? We'll be live in a minute. Like I said, fucking. Uh, we got a lot of shit coming up, though. Uh, four episodes away from episode 200. You know? We got fucking uh, Green Jello, then Convalescence, and then God's Chaos, and then Lex the Hexmaster for episode 200 of the No Fucks Given Hour. As well as the Freaky Fucked Up Fear Hour Holiday Edition. Uh, fucking Talk Snuff from the road. Uh, insane Assassination coming up. You catch all that shit. As well as you can catch me at fucking Booty for the Baby. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave you this for No Fucks Given Radio. We'll be back in a moment with Super Nintendo, episode 10. Oh, uh, wrong picture. If you can picture it perfect yeah. Welcome into my circus Where I be serving these verses Been working my whole life for this You don't think I deserve it? Uh-huh. The only thing I see in life in death And that's for certain So when I'm rapping in person I get to snapping up on a track Can I murder your favorite rapper Attacking them in the Back to the service, yeah. Or back to the circus, yeah. Or back to the street show where people are nervous. Then I'm holding this purpose just to be molding these verses while I'm controlling your surface, mentally blowing your circus. Meaning you don't want to challenge me. You're like a fucked up car because you won't go far. That's my analogy. With getting twisted in my brain, I'm insane. Killing you niggas up inside the game is the range. Yeah. You want to claim that you dope, but you really lame. And I don't got time for any of you, so what a shame. I know what you are thinking. You probably think you're dreaming. Yeah. Don't really see I'm clowning around I know what you are thinking Good God, you must be drinking You must not really think I'm clowning around I know what you are thinking You probably think you're dreaming You just don't really see I'm clowning around I know what you are thinking Good God, you must be drinking not really think I'm clowning around. I know what you are thinking. You probably think you're dreaming. You just don't really.
really see I'm clowning around I know what you are thinking Good God, you must be drinking You must not really think I'm clowning around We back live. We are undone. Undone, I tell you. Destroyed. I didn't mean to fuck that shit up. Take two. Take two. Don't they know you're in the danger zone? Okay, okay, okay. My bad, my bad. Take three, take three. Do I have to kill everyone myself? Huh? Oh. <gasps> oh, shit. This is Jackson. Let me tell you a little story about Jackson. Pay attention. History lesson. I've seen it all rise and fall. Let the best while we hiding in the shadows. Think about it next time. And I am Bonnie Rock. Body, body. I do more like that to say uh, I'm ripping bodies up I'm fucking head to toe I'm making body art Line them up in a row And we are the Michigan Misfits Fucking talent show Lil MTV in the radio Baby, baby, baby. I'm a Misfits, no I'll never sell out Do you think it's a baby, baby And you're listening to No Fuck Given Radio Dear God, what is that thing? You can catch us out on Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Bird, Damn! Chat Piss, DJ Baby, Damn! DK Barrymore, Rock of Ages up at Detroit, Crap Inc. in Jackson, Michigan. And I think that's about it. Damn! Now my backpack. I love my family. Potato, potato, potato. Young hunter on a track. Oh, you jump is here on that internet. On my block, I've been a threat. Teenagers in the war zone, so at my age, I became a vet. No death in the motherfucking streets. Go paralyzed, running with the heat. Keep quiet, I can hear his heartbeat. Skit so I'm a motherfucking beast. I quit the raw farm, my clears a pop off. Sipping the moonshine and pop off. Get your head chopped off by my boss. Your death, my loss. Get nailed to a motherfucking cross. Jesus Christ, I'm about that life. Who's the first? Bring that light. You don't really wanna fight with the ghost of Kimbo Slice. Now I'm hyped for the night, looking for the bright lights. Fit the Hennessy and some shred fried rice. With a bad bitch and the head game tight. Suck my soul and swallow my life. I'm always in the something, so they seem to stay away. I take that hand. I seem to stay awake I'm an animal out the cage And this life is just a fate I ain't signing to no label I will never be a slave Keep the contract, my killer's a bomb back Smoking on the blunt, that's as big as a wombat. bat Why you getting high off of second-hand contact? Scoot some brandy ass rats from combat Get you so in buckshot Homie, you don't want none Yeah, they say we going stupid We about to act dumb Tell me gun, plays percussion with a hundred round drum When the drummer boy play it go for up a bump Watch their words bounce off like rubber bullets yeah. I came off the street I can tell when shit is fake I can tell when cats are real I know when the softest cake Come on. My heart is when they froze Fuck these Twitter trolls Split them like centiphobes Eat them like dinner rolls OG from the game, tell the truth, spit it cold If I lie, then execute me When I die, they'll break the mold Been to county, been to fed I put guns to people's heads Tables turned on me instead Police showed up and I fled I got songs so real, I wrote until my fingers bled On the verge to kill somebody Danger lights are blinking red I'm in the murder mitten Hanging with the bottom feeders Me and Schizo in a stolen car with body bleeders You wanna take us out, you got some plan to rob and beat us Promise you don't want it if you try to bring them heaters So in buckshot, homie, you don't want none Yeah, they say we going stupid, we about to act dumb Tell me gun, plays percussion with a hundred round drum When the drummer boy play it, go for a rubber bump
G I said S F F T G Yo, guess who the F I B lays Mister, I hope you catch every STD And they announce it like it's groundbreaking across every station While everybody watches and gossips on hourly occasions Your bosses confirm it and start deferring your payments The unemployment line's a mosh pit and you despise waiting God damn, how embarrassing You fucking Paris then Exit the states to renounce being Americans Try that out for a year before the despair begins And they commit suicide and leave the notice your inheritance Such a cold life And then you go blind Try to seek help, nobody will co-sign so instead you get addicted to coke lines And go back to the doctor you were clean the whole time yeah. I hope some bad shit happens to you I said I hope some bad shit happens to you I just wanna be a dickhead Bro, I think that's the truth I just really want some bad shit to happen to you I hope some bad shit happens to you I said I hope some bad shit happens to you Man, I fucking hate people, dude Fuck me too I just really want some bad shit to happen to you Some bad shit happens to you I hope you get caught up acting a fool I hope you snag his dick on the back of your tooth And that he leaves your face fucked up, blackened and blue I hope your boyfriend gets off on the sound that you gag And that you catch bulimia from him calling you fat I hope you get tetanus while playing some Tetris That your kids wake up wondering why dad's left us Hope protective services come snatching your kids That your next hangnail peels back all of your skin Your chin gets forced in some horse shit You're not paid for it because that's what a motherfucking horse get Hope everything that you eat, ghost peppers Hope everywhere that you go has cold weather Treat you like blood and bone with Rufio and knuckle up I uppercut your uppercut, so what? Fucking yeah. slut I hope some bad shit happens to you I said I hope some bad shit happens to you I just wanna be a dickhead Bro, I think the truth I just really want some bad shit to happen to you I hope some bad shit happens to you I said I hope some bad shit happens to you Man, I fucking hate people, too. Fuck me, too I just I really want some bad shit to happen to you Trying to ride out, kinda any up to smoke I'm too heavy 
pee on these niggas. I should like no bitch, mind your business. Never talk about fight club. Warrior, number one, kill and make the money come. Lost count, other bodies on the gun. I'm only out to move forward. I can't afford to get caught off. I can't play like a keyboard. Oh no, not me, Lord. Don't make me send a message. Somebody tell these boys. I'm up on all levels of this. We like, so she like. We got the ghetto with shit. Why? Niggas, no. Bitches, no. Only bitch who can ride with me is up the road. Niggas, no. Bitches, no. All I do is get gold for her real she go. Niggas, no. Bitches, no. It's all business, motherfucker. Where's the go? Niggas, no. Bitches, no. Not gonna rock this bitch for show.
press that button because they're live. Well, we're kind of live, guys. We're live on yeah. Facebook, <laughs> gentlemen. Yeah, Super Nintendo, episode 10. So uh, let's get this shit going. All right, for real. Babe, press stop. See, and then I press start. And then I got to press start again. Right? And then look. Man, I should start doing that, but I didn't do that quick enough because I could actually play that for the Facebook Live too. But it's a fucking, it's a thing of fuckery, guys, to do it properly. I'm telling you, it's, it's a lot of clicking of a lot of buttons. Yeah. So if you guys want to hear the fucking intro, go to nofucksgivenradio.com or get the app or, you know, some. There's places. Yeah. Whoa. <clears throat> I need to remember to press the mic button, though. Yeah. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we're live. No fucks given radio. That's right, and I am the unknown factor. And tonight is episode 10 of Super Nerd Tendo. Man, I love... Real quick, real quick. Eraser, DKB, how you guys doing? What's up, man? How you guys doing? I, I don't know, man. I, I just go to this gentleman, Sandy. Do you notice? I, I don't know, man. I feel like every every show needs to end on a zero now, like because we got this one that's gonna end on a zero at the end of the year. We got fucking no fucks given hours gonna end on episode two hundred. I don't know. Then we'd have to do like fucking seven episodes of the freaky fucked up here hour or something though for that to work right. So fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's too much. That's too much. But this is Super Nintendo, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I got them Smash Bros with me. All right? And, man. Yo. We here. Racer. You yeah. lined up a hell of a guest this week. Well, month, I should say. Week, whatever. It is this week. But you know what the fuck I meant? This show. Yeah. Episode. You want to tell us something about him? Introduce him? Yeah, this week, this month's episode is Troy Hickman. He's a top cow writer, and he's worked for a couple different other companies, but, you know, let, let's have Troy introduce himself, maybe. I don't know. Troy? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, it's uh, it's cool to be on here with you. I um, I went to the dentist earlier today, so uh, this is actually the, the high point of my day. I know you're probably <laughs> flattered by that, but, uh, yeah, I, I, as I was saying earlier, I was a little worried that... Uh, they do something to my mouth that I, I, I sit here sounding more like an idiot than I normally do. Um, it's like one of those sitcoms, you know, there's always one of those sitcom episodes where they got something to do and they, you know, they, they bust their jaw or something like that. But uh, I'm, I'm relatively uh, coherent tonight. Thank goodness. Damn it. That's, that's kind of, I was hoping you were all kinds of fucked up, but I do just love, like, if that's not a fucking, Catchphrase right there. NFGR, better than the dentist. <laughs> First story. Thanks again for doing the show with us. Well, glad to be here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Troy. Thank you for doing the show. Um, I mean, like, real quick, the first thing I want to go into is you, you've been nominated twice for the Eisner Award, Award as well as you won, uh, you were one of the two winners for the Top Cow Artist uh, Spotlight. Yeah. Now, first thing, that was 2008, right? Uh, the uh, Yeah, the Top Cow uh, pilot season thing was, yeah. Yeah. How long had you been, like, just trying to fucking get into that shit before that? I'm curious. Uh, you mean as far as pilot season, or? I mean, as far as just comic, like, the comic industry period, and really trying to get it to where oh, you were well, out there and um, published. I, uh, golly, I... <laughs> Starts way back, you know. Right, uh, right before I uh, came on here tonight, I was actually listening to the the show you folks did with uh, Uncle Raffy, and um, oh, huh. it was uh, it was some of the same stuff. And it's like you know, it was, you, I think you were talking to him about that sort of parallel, you know, lives and development stuff. But um, I mean, I you know, I discovered comics when I was like three, and uh, I had had a kind of a no-account relative that uh, gave me some comics. And uh, just like a lot of other folks, I, I started reading, you know, before I went to school because of comics. And so, I mean, pretty much from, uh, you know, from Jump Street, they were part of my life. Um, and, in fact, when I was a, a kid, you know, I 
I couldn't draw, but I could do stick figures and stuff, and I'd make up little comic stories. And um, interestingly enough, some of those characters, you know, years later when I started doing professional comics have shown up, just little drawings that I did when I was like three. So um, save that stuff. <laughs> don't, uh, don't let your old drawings and stuff, uh, you know, disappear because they might come in handy. But, um, you know, I don't know. My, my whole life I, I wanted to write comics. I, uh, when I was a little kid, I, I initially, I, um, I was five years old when uh, they had the first moon landing, which tells you how ancient I am. But um, I wanted to be an astronaut for a short amount of time, which is probably, it's a good thing that I wasn't because I, I get motion sickness these days. I can't ride in a car in the back seat without getting sick. So probably astronaut wasn't my best bet. But, um, you know, I, I'd wanted to do comics just forever. And then, oh, it must have been, I think, around 1984 or so, I started to get it into my head that I could actually, you know, maybe make some sort of a of a living out of it. Or, I, I don't know, maybe eventually get into it somehow. And then, oh, it must have been about the early 90s or so, I started self-publishing my own little digest comics. Um, and uh, <clears throat> just taking them to conventions and, and the like. And uh, eventually it, it paid off after doing that for, I don't know, quite a while, probably six or seven years. Um, I was at one of the Chicago cons, and Jim McLaughlin, who was the you know in charge of Wizard Magazine at the time, happened to, to come by, and he, he was interested in, in the books. I, I had a book then called Holy Crawlers, which eventually became – common grounds and uh he just liked the title so he he picked it up and uh took it back to the offices with him and uh they you know they passed him around and stuff and they liked the book enough that they decided to to do a, an article in wizard about it which was kind of you know at the time you wouldn't have seen little photocopied comics getting get that kind of coverage um and then eventually he became the in charge of um, top cow and uh, got a hold of me and asked if, you know, they could have these redrawn and turn them into, you know, big-time professional comics. So that's sort of how I got into it. Um, so, I you know, I had spent years, you know, self-publishing um, before then. And, you know, I mean, getting a little bit of notice. But, you know, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, even if you, if you do a, a full-sized black-and-white comic these days, it's hard to get a lot of folks interested and it's certainly hard to get distribution and stuff like that. But, you know, imagine how much, you know, harder it is when you just got a little, you know, digest size photocopy comic. It's pretty tough. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I uh, realized I was just rambling there for a long time. <laughs> that's a cool story. Oh, no, that's fun. No, yeah. Hell no. No, that was a great story, man, for real. Now, you bring up uh, that, that comic that you initially got brought up to, and which has ended up being Coffee Grounds, which is the one that you were nominated for two uh, Eisner Awards, uh, uh, awards yeah. for. Mm -hmm. Now, man, what was that whole process like? I mean, from going to you self-published this to he gets a hold of you and is like, hey, man, I want to have all these fucking, you know, artists. Like, I'm just going to have them fuck with your shit. Is that okay? Like, what, dude, what was that whole experience? Because it had to be like a little like, are you, are you fucking with me? And there's a who well, yeah, it was, that book. Sorry. Uh, initially, it was, you know, it's one of those deals where you think, well, you know, who who really is this that, that I'm talking to on the phone and, you know, what's the deal? But, yeah, it eventually it turned out to be the case. And, yeah, it was it was weird. I mean, going from this, you know, photocopied comic that probably, you know, I'd be surprised if an average issue of it was seen by maybe, you know, 50 to 100 people. And then literally within you know, just a couple of years having it up for Eisner's and stuff. It was, it was odd. And uh, I didn't mind them redrawing them though, because, uh, you know, the, uh, the artist that they lined up for common grounds was, I mean, it was un unbelievable. Yeah, you know, it, it, it was, a, <laughs> well, I mean, it was a lot of the biggest names, you know, in comics. I mean, it just, it was, un, it was, uh, you know, I, I really couldn't believe it, but as it happened, Jim, um, you know, because he was, uh, in charge of Wizard and everything, he knows pretty much everybody in the comics business. So he was able to get in touch with these folks, and it probably cost us a pretty penny. I don't know if the book has broken even yet. But, um, 
it, yeah, it was it was just amazing. All these people that I had, I had idolized as artists, and you know, suddenly they're they're drawing my characters. You know, I mean, previously the only way I could have had that happen is if I had gone up to them at a convention and you know paid them to actually draw my character. So, um, yeah, it was it was a hell of a thing. I uh, to this day, I mean, you know, I think about that stuff, and it's just, uh, I, you know. I, I, I keep thinking I'm eventually going to wake up and, you know, realize that I'm even more pathetic than I thought I was. But <laughs> Hey, no, man. I mean, if, if it fucking works, it works. Just fucking make sure it works for you. You know, I think that's the thing. And I think you really have. Now, I'm gonna, man, I'm going to put you in the same fucking situation. I'm putting quite a few other people in this on. Because uh, I know in 2009, uh, Coffee Grounds was optioned by Stars. Is there any, I yeah. mean, fucking, like, did what came of that? Well, I don't know. Any, as as far as I know, and... I, I don't know if anything, uh, you know, it, it doesn't sound like anything came of it. I, I Yeah, I uh, at the time, I had never even, I didn't know anything about it. And then I was reading, like, Newsarama or something, you know, one day during the uh, San Diego Con. And uh, I noticed that it mentioned that had been, you know, talked about at a panel or something. And I'm thinking, well, what, what the hell is this? I, I hadn't heard anything about this, and they're announcing it, you know, at the convention. Um, yeah, I guess Stars had optioned it, and at the time they were talking, I think about maybe Seth Green producing it or something. But uh, as with so much of this stuff, you know, it's probably a one in ten thousand chance that it'll ever actually go on the screen. Um, the most you can hope for is, you know, to get a little bit of licensing money because most of it's just going to sit there. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. When they first did Common Grounds around 2004, 2005, I, you know, they had asked me to write up like a TV treatment for it and stuff, and I had done that. But uh, didn't hear anything more about it. And, you know, it's, yeah, what is it, like seven years later now after the uh, the announcement with the Stars thing, I haven't heard anything more about that either. You never know with this stuff. I mean, sometimes it takes forever, but um, I would have thought seven years I would have heard something by now. Of course, as this stuff tends to do in that, in the meantime, I mean, I, I, I first did the, the Holy Crawler stories, like I said, probably started them around 94, and then it was like 10 years before they ever became Common Grounds. Um, so in that time, right, you had other comics popping up and, you know, you had folks saying, oh, well, Common Grounds is just a rip off of this or that, not realizing that I had, you know, done this stuff 10 years before. And in a, in a similar way, between the time that they licensed Common Grounds for a TV show to now, there have been, you know, other TV shows kind of about, you know, the, the downtime of superheroes and that kind of stuff. Right. That's nuts. It'd be a good show, definitely. I feel it'd be a cool, interesting concept for a show. Twilight Guardian also would be a good show. I would feel for TV. Yeah, that was. They had talked about having that become a TV show as well. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything more about that. I know at one point, after I had won the the, the pilot season, you know that uh, your your reward for winning it is you get a four issue series. And um, after I had won it, uh, they were talking to me at uh, Top Cow about, you know, maybe where the, the four-issue series could go. And their take on it was, was a very kind of uh, TV-like thing where it was really a lot like the, um, oh, the, um, I'm trying to think of the name. What's that Shia LaBeouf movie where it's, it's like Rear Window, but... Uh, uh, I can't. I can't oh, think of the name of the movie. Fucking time travel one? No, it's it's the one where he like lives next door to a serial killer or something. You know what I'm talking about? Um, the, way, the, the way you like look through the binoculars, but it was a yeah. remake. And it yeah. Was, like the strain. Yeah. The stranger. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't remember the name of it right offhand, but that. But you know, Top Cow was kind of saying, well, maybe it could be that sort of a book. But I—that's not really the way I wanted to to go with it. I could understand why, especially in today's comics, right, where really comics in a lot of ways serve as kind of a farm team for movies and TV shows, obviously. But um, 
Yeah, and that was that was more of a theatrical kind of idea, but it really went against the notion of of what Twilight Guardian is because she's supposed to be, you know, just as you know as as every day as possible. I mean, she she patrols like a, a nine block area in her neighborhood, and you know, it's it's functionally my neighborhood. It's you know, it's like a neighborhood in Lafayette, Indiana, where you know you could walk around at night and never see any kind of crime or anything happen. So it it was the the whole idea of the book is it would be really mundane. And then I also kind of when we when we did the the four issue series, I I went into other stuff with it like she might actually be a little bit crazy and you know. With Twilight Guardian though, a lot of the fun of it is the fact that she reads comics and then I'm able to do little parody pages of comics that she's reading. And so it, you know, it really allowed me to play around with that a lot and have fun with that. So Okay. Now, I, you said something else, though, which is the fact that comics at this point have kind of become something where, I mean, you're, they're, you're trying to get them adapted to either TV or film, um, as far as with so many things. Now, that obviously used not to be the case, because, let's be honest, you know, back in the day, fucking, in, in the 90s, if you read comics, it, it wasn't really fucking that cool. It's kind of like, fuck you. Yeah, we got made fun of when we were up there eating comics. Oh, now, yeah. now, yeah. now it's like it's well, a cult, cult culture I, now. I tell you, I, I, I always pinpoint it. I started going to, to conventions and stuff in, you know, probably the early 80s. And I always say that the cutoff point for that kind of stuff where comics started becoming, you know, popular and not necessarily just nerd stuff is probably 1989 when the first Tim Burton Batman movie came out. Because right. yeah. that's that's really where you saw it start to change, and you saw people showing up at conventions, and it's you know it's kind of a of, of a double edged sword in in a way too. And I, I I always try not to sound like like an old curmudgeonly you know comic guy when I talk like this, but yeah, on the one hand, you know we do have a lot more kind of general interest in comics these days, and it you know it's in some cases it's even considered chic as opposed to being you know nerdy or whatever. But I don't know. Sometimes I worry about the, the kind of the, the comic audience because if if you go to conventions and if you've gone to conventions from the early days and you look at it now, you know, yeah, there are more guys who are going to conventions who have actually kissed a girl, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's not the nerdy thing that it used to be. But I don't know. I in the old days when it was just nerds, it was also a pretty intelligent audience. And, you know, they might not have any social skills and their communication wasn't great, but they were generally pretty smart folks. And and you still have those kind of people at conventions, but it's a little bit more diluted, you know, because of the the fact that it's just the general populace more now, I think. Man, are you saying you got some fucking idiots among the comic or amongst the comic book fans? <laughs> well, you've got idiots everywhere now. but um, I know, but look, but no, 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 but you said... It used to be that there weren't fucking idiots at the comic book conventions. Well, there, there, and now well, there, there have are. always there have always been idiots everywhere. I'm just saying that I think if you know when you have anything become more of a of a general populist kind of thing, right? You're you're going to you're going to have a little bit more of everything. And I think in the old days when it was just a nerdy thing, I mean, you know, let's face it. Nerds, for whatever other problems they have, I mean, one of the things they're known for is intelligence. And so now you you have you still have that certainly, but you also have you know kind of a again more more just kind of the, the general populace kind of stuff. And it's and you know and this is where I'll get myself in trouble because I know I'm going to at some point tonight. But um, you know I when I'm not writing comics, I'm I'm teaching. Um, I'm a college English and creative writing instructor. And so I see the folks that are going to college these days. And I started I started teaching when I was in grad school at Purdue, right? So that was like 1989, I think. So it's been almost, you know, 30 years now that I've been doing this. And I've got to tell you, I mean, you know, just in general, people are they're not, you know, the sharpest tools in the shed all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think we're kind of, to some extent, we've been dumbing folks down. And, uh, you know, I've actually, I, I can't talk about it too much because it's, it's, it hasn't gone anyplace yet, but um, one of the comic pitches I'm working on right now um, is based on the concept that people 
who are you know, living currently know so little about history. And uh, I've, I've gotten that from the students in my class, and it's amazing what people do not know. I mean, I've asked them, I've asked them before, like, uh, you know, within five years, when did World War II take place? Or at least when was the U.S. involved in World War II? And I've gotten the answers everywhere from 1981 <laughs> to, to the 1700s. Now, what? <laughs> I, I'm not joking. And and the the thing is, the scary part about that is, of course, if if it had taken place since the 1700s, then Pearl Harbor would have had to have been bombed on horseback, you know, and and those poor horses probably would have drowned. But I mean, and it's amazing. I've asked I've asked him before, you know, what was a what was a popular uh, TV show in World War One? Well, obviously, you know, we didn't really have TV in World War One yet. But I've gotten answers like MASH. I mean, you think about that for a TV show about the Korean War, and it was popular during World War One. So, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't want to sound like a, some crusty old guy, but, I mean, just from my experience, that's the case. And so, yeah, so I'm kind of basing a, a, a comic on that concept now. But um, anyway, I, don't, I, think, I think I totally strayed from what you, you were asking me, but. I don't even know what I ask now. I frankly don't even give a fuck. It's besides the point. Uh, yeah. I, I, I really, I really don't. Down I just for love the fact that you're pretty much, Troy, you're pretty much just like, yeah, we're going to idiocracy is what it is. <laughs> well, the, the only thing about idiocracy is if you've seen the movie, it's supposed to take 500 years, in the, it takes place 500 years in the future. It really should take place within like five years, in my opinion. Right. You know, it's, it's amazing how how just incredibly uninformed you know, people can be, and it, I mean, it's, it, that's the toughest part for me in, in teaching, because I, I mean, wait. I can teach you certain things, but. Hold on. You can only work with what you got. <laughs> no, I tell you, I just seen it in California the other day that someone, like, California's getting sued because most of their students can't even read, <laughs> like, the elementary. Oh, yeah. Well, I, Crazy. at the beginning, at the beginning of this semester, I've got uh, a class, and I ask them, and I ask this every semester, because of what I've learned from it, I ask them, and there's, say, 24 people in the class, I ask, okay, who's the current governor of Indiana, right? And the most I have ever had out of 24 is two people who knew the governor of Indiana. Now, the scary part about that is, is that because my, my students are college students, so many of them are really political people, you know, they're always, oh, they're involved in all this activism and stuff. But they can't tell me who the freaking governor of Indiana is. And these are all people who live in Indiana, you know, so. It's the people that vote. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily most of them don't vote, you know, but. Right. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you so who anyway, the current now, governor of Indiana is. Anyway, now that I've maligned is. current society, yeah, yeah. Well, I see, I couldn't tell you who the current governor of Indiana is, but that was because I was so worried about a former governor or governor of Indiana getting fucking elected vice president, and then I couldn't even goddamn vote against that jackass, but that's no fucking another point altogether. But real quick, I do just have to point out again, for everybody listening and watching, this is a rare occurrence where everyone on air right now is from the same fucking state. And it's in the same fucking state. That don't happen. Who's your Who's your cast? Right. It, this is a first. Like it's never fucking happened before. For everyone to be from the same state and there to be this many fucking callers on the line on no fucking yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? It's It's a fucking. It's not a first. You gotta show that Indiana love. We're big Top Cow fan guys, too. I'm, I'm Top Cow's one of our favorite yeah. companies. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Top Cow guy. I'll be real honest. So let's get into bat then. Um, so you're doing that, and when you submit in 2008, like, what's your whole thought process in that, man? Because that's, I mean, they would, uh, they've been running that contest for a couple years at that point, hadn't they? That's one of the first ones. They usually, yeah, was it, it? Yeah, I, I, I think they may have done, I don't know. They may have only done one before. I don't even know. Really? Okay, because I know it was right around then when they started doing them. And they still do those, ladies and gentlemen, yearly as far as for trying to get new people in the industry. I know they've got a rule now, though, where you can't have been published before, right? Is, yeah. is that the case? I, I don't even know. Yeah, I, well, like you can't you can't be published. You can be self-published, but also uh, 
like they every year the contest is a little different. Like when Troy did it, you could basically write any story you wanted. And now they have like you got to write a Witchblade story, or I think the new one was about a postal backup yeah. story or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, when when I did it, I um, they actually uh, called me and uh, asked if I wanted to because uh, when I when I initially made the deal with them for Common Grounds, they also asked if they could. Uh, you know, have the rights to to publish something with Twilight Guardian, and that you know, like I said, that would have been like 2004 or five. And then they called me in 2008 and said they were doing this, you know, this new season of pilot season, and and um, ask if I wanted to have Twilight Guardian be part of that. So, um, so I did. I kind of cobbled together the uh, the stuff that I had done with her at you know, self published wise, and then. Uh, Changed a few things and added a few things and the like, and then um, so it was, and it was up against a lot of good stuff. I mean, it was it was up against you know these were not people just submitting out of the blue. These were folks they had asked about it. So it was you know Jonathan Hickman and Jay Farber and I forget who all else, but Matt Hawkins had his book in there and stuff. So um, and then uh, yeah, the competition was rough. I. <laughs> I tried to keep up on it every day, and I was lucky because by that time I had um, done the uh, the City of Heroes stuff, and uh, the people on the City of Heroes message board just really made a tremendous effort to uh, get the book voted in. So, um, cool. and they did, and at that time they they had they would have two winners, and those books would get four issue series each, and um, I was. Um, I got the most votes, and then the second one was um, Genius, the book Genius, um, which was kind of interesting, too, because when Top Cow asked me about doing the pilot season thing, um, Twilight Guardian had previously been a black woman, and they asked, since since the Genius book was also in the competition and the main <laughs> character of that was a black woman, they asked if, if it was okay if they made her white instead. And I said, you know, sure, it's not a problem because they're, you know, it doesn't really have anything to do with her character. She just happened to be black before. Um, but then Twilight Guardian and, and Genius won the competition that year, and they would have had, you know, black female characters in both of the uh, both of the top winning slots, which, uh, you know, in these kind of days would be considered real diversity and stuff. But, um, you know, that's not how it ended up. So, yeah, so <laughs> Twilight Guardian had a race change in the middle of her career, so... Crazy. Never knew that. Yeah, that's that's fucking nutty. I wouldn't expect that. But hey, you did bring up another thing though. I wanted to go into, which is you read a couple of the uh, issues of City Heroes, issues four through six. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And man, I see that you that got adapted into the video game to where it's a fucking story. Yeah, I was going to ask about now. that too. Yeah, it, it, that was really cool. They um. I, I I did a fair amount of work for City Heroes. I did the three issues of the comic, um, and the, those three issues were popular enough that they wanted that they asked if they could uh, put them in the game, and they they had me actually script that too the the parts of it that are in the game, and um, they uh, they also asked me to do part of their I think it was called the guest architect thing where you would actually create a series of of missions in the game itself. They had a few other folks do that, various authors and things. And then the the coolest part is that I, the the City of Heroes, uh, the arc that I did in the comic, the one of the main characters was this uh, old guy named Cyrus Thompson, and they put a tribute to him in the game. They actually, outside of the train station, they would have a, a statue of Cyrus Thompson, and uh, which was very cool. Every time in the game, because I, you know, I played the game too, Every time I was in the game and I would run by there, I'd stop and kind of salute the guy uh, just because I thought it was so cool. And, in fact, when the game finally went under, which was a very sad day for me, um, you, we knew that at, like, midnight or whatever, they were going to shut the thing down. And so it was kind of like, you know, you could see the oncoming apocalypse. You know, it was like the, uh, the big event from, you know, big, DC's big crisis event. or whatever. <laughs> right. and, and so... It, that that you know about an hour before then or so I uh, I went to the uh, the statue of uh, Cyrus Thompson and just stood there waiting for uh, Doomsday to come and 
another guy came over and noticed it, and he stood there with me. So <laughs> the two of us should have held hands and sung Kumbaya. But <laughs> that's a cool story. Hell yeah. I always I mean, liked that game. Like, I thought it was a cool, yeah, cool yeah, concept. Yeah, that was a good game. Yeah, it's it's the only real uh, online video game I think I've ever. Well, maybe uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, why is it not? Oh, uh, Freedom Force. Yeah, I you know I'm yeah. I, generally for that kind of stuff I'm only interested in like superheroes and the like. But I, I mean I've never played like the DC game or anything like that. So yeah, that's not bad either. They even made City of Villains. Afterwards, yeah. yeah, I I played City of Villains, but you know I I didn't feel right about it. You know? right. I kind of well, felt like no, this is this isn't working for me. What well, kind of well, was your character in City of Heroes, if you don't mind us asking? Uh, well, I, I had I had literally hundreds of them, and yeah. they were they were all based on like really bad puns, just like my comics <laughs> tend to be. Very cool. And uh, in in fact, some of the some of the characters from uh, city or yeah, from the City of Heroes characters that I created in the game, I eventually have ended up using in comics. So, oh, um, which it, it, that see that tends to be a really fertile thing for me because like I also for about twenty years I played the uh, the Champions uh, pen and paper you know role playing game. Right. Um, if you're familiar with that, and um, a, a lot of my Common Grounds characters came out of that. Um, characters that I played in the game, like the acidic Jew and, you know, all these various characters. And like I said, most of them have pun names, but <laughs> I, I did actually, at one point I did get, uh, when I was playing City of Heroes, and I always thought this was cool because it meant that it was a very fair game. Um, even though the, the developers and the like knew who I was, you know, because of my work with them, um, you know, if anybody had a character that was considered a little, you know, went to a little too far, you know, it's in, in these politically correct days, you know, they, right. they monitor everything. But um, I, I had a character that actually got uh, banned, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I had this, this female military character that I called uh, Major Feminine Itching, and uh, I guess they thought that was a little too far. She had like a couple of minions, and one of them was called, I think, Mass and Gill, and the other one was, uh, <laughs> I, I forget. But I, it was a little bit too much for him, apparently. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I logged in one day and found out that she had been totally generic. So. <laughs> How is that too far? That shit's <laughs> funny. I I know, but you you know again you know how how things are these days. I I, I don't want to get into that because then I'm going to trigger really anybody anymore. Like <laughs> yeah, hard to trigger anybody anymore. The internet kind of ruined everybody. I feel. I don't know, man. That's why we just it's no fucks given radio, and it's we are our own fucking thing, and everybody can do whatever the fuck they want. I prefer it that way. Like fuck censorship. That's some bullshit. But that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, and I, I don't again. Oh, don't ahead. get me started because I, I talk about this stuff all the time. You know, if you if you read like <laughs> the, my Facebook page and stuff, you know, I'm I, it's it's the bane of my existence. And of course, I have to spend every day on a college campus, so you can imagine, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I can, well yeah. then, oh, I gotta I gotta ask. I mean, it's very much off topic. But it's very much something that's currently affecting us. What do you think of the whole net neutrality and how they're trying to push that through and just fuck it and all that? You know, I I don't know. I, it's one of those deals that I, I don't really know enough about it to speak with any kind of authority. I mean, I, I guess I understand the basic issues of it, but I don't really know too much about it in, in terms of being in-depth. So then, just from the basics, what's your opinion, though? I'm curious. You got to have a base opinion, Troy. Well, you know my my general take on everything. Okay, whatever it is, is that freedom is always the best thing. And you know, it, it, I mean, and whatever that is, whether it's free speech, whether it's the free marketplace, you know, I, I generally think everything should just be left up to the individual. And, you know, even in the case of things, you know, I said, like I said, the free marketplace, I mean, you know, things will be determined by how people feel about them. And, you know, as long as you give people the option of, you know, saying, 
you know, this is not something that I want to patronize or what have you. I think that's the way to go about life. So it, almost anything that you ask me about, my take on it is, you know, do what you want to do as long as it's not affecting other folks adversely, and, and that's it, you know. Right. So, I mean, I, I guess that's kind of a laissez-faire attitude, but I don't know. What's, what's your take on it? Um, the, the fucking, see, I, I mean, it's, it's a problem because you do kind of want to have a certain control over the net because you can't let it just be completely unregulated. Then you end up with, then you end up with goddamn terrible shit happening. I mean, that's just the truth. But at the same time, you have to leave it unregulated because otherwise you're censoring everyone. So it's a. It's Man, it's a cunt is what it is, to be <laughs> rightfully honest with you, you know, and one that's... I'm talking about making and, you have to pay more for certain Well, and see that, so yeah, that I certainly don't, I, do, I don't agree with. Uh, that's the other thing they're trying to enforce right now, and that part of it is total bullshit, is they're trying to make it to where, like, you know, your service provider, whether it be AT&T, Xfinity, what whatever, will be able they to control can, what you see, pay. and, like, if you want to... They'll make you pay more to access certain websites. Oh, like oh, you yeah, want to go to yeah, they you can, know blah blah yeah, blah dot com? Well, that's see. five more dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that I disagree with. Now, as far as you know, using it in a in a manner where it's helpful to society and and stopping really heinous things from happening, that's a great thing. But that doesn't involve to where you have to invade everyone's personal privacy to the degree that they want to with the bill that they're trying to pass. So it's 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 a give and take situation. We have to give a little, but they fucking shouldn't be trying to take as much as they are. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, I tend to look at things in terms of, you know, kind of the slippery slope. And so, you know, for me, it always becomes a matter of, well, you know, the ends don't necessarily justify the means. And, you know, so if I sometimes think, well, I think most of the time I think, that when we when we try to, you know, uh, abate anything or censor it, we're probably creating a bigger monster than what we already have. I mean, there's certainly awful things that happen on the internet. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to stop any of those things with any kind of control, though, because of course, especially in a thing like the internet, the minute that you have try to have any control over it, you've got you know a million guys trying to figure out the way around that. So. Well, I mean, I don't know. Troy, you've already got the existence of the dark web, which you can find fucking anything you want on. I mean, and I mean pretty much literally anything you want, ladies and gentlemen, literally on the dark web. If you access it and start going through everything, you know, you can, and I'm not saying go do any of this real quickly, <laughs> but I mean, you could get a hooker, you could get any kind of drug, gun, anything you want. You could hire a hitman. I mean, you could watch somebody get murdered. You could pay somebody to murder someone in a specific way like the dark web is really really fucked up but that you also have to it's you, also a you've pain just in the done a great commercial for the dark web <laughs> right. hey well Bring again i'm not advocating any of this i'm just saying it exists just because it exists doesn't mean i agree with it look i don't agree with the fact that the fucking our vice president and president are who the fuck they are but that's just the way it is and it's reality that we got to deal with you know but I agree with you as far as what you're saying is a slippery slope because you're right. You start to give that away. They're going to want to take more. And truly, if you want freedom, it's something you always have to be willing to technically shoot your neighbor for if, if it really comes down to it. Well, and how many times has that happened? I don't know how many times I've had to shoot my neighbors. Why you got to shoot your neighbor, Which, Troy? Right. God damn. It's it actually that's kind of funny because I live next door to my parents, so uh, <laughs> inheritance. He just goes over <laughs> monthly, shoots his dad in the leg. What the fuck, man? It's miles of tool. I don't, I don't. I don't think I would have to shoot my dad in the leg. He's uh, he scares me on a regular basis. He uh, <laughs> he he was over yeah. here one day. We had we had put up a, a fence in the backyard, uh, like a wooden fence. And uh, the the edges of it, uh, the the boards were sticking out too high. So I go out there planning on doing something about this. My dad's already up on like a 12-foot ladder. He's got an electric chainsaw. Now, bear in mind, my dad's like in his 80s. I'm thinking, oh, my God. But he does stuff like that all the time, you know. 
Yeah, my well, like that too. good, because yeah. you don't you just but, be fucking shooting people for no. Eh. Racer, what is wrong with the guests that you booked? It's fucking just, I just shoot my neighbor occasionally. <laughs> hey, like this is Indiana, like, damn it. I like my my guests. They hey, tell wait. me cool stories about their first off. Shooting. First off, it's Florida that you can get away with that shit, Troy. Not Indiana. <laughs> hey, Indiana is. Uh, We've got stand your ground laws and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. You can dig it. The, the only state I think like, that has piss Troy off. Go and get goddamn shot and shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus, man, calm down. Troy's trying to kill people, babe. She just uh, shook her head in agreement. Whatever, DKB. I just kind of want to talk more about the uh, City of Heroes. I mean, how is that as far as adapting that, writing the adaptation to the video game compared to writing an actual comic book? Uh, it wasn't really that much different because for the for the video game, when I when I adapted the comic stuff, it was really just a matter of kind of scripting it in a little bit different format. They didn't really have me do much aside from just putting the words in people's mouths and the like in the game. Um, <clears throat> when I did the, the architect thing where I actually had to do a whole long mission, um, that was really, that was a new kind of deal for me because I, you know, you have to go through and, and actually set, you know, things like power levels and things and you have to make sure that the, you know, the, the characters are balanced. So if you're fighting them, you know, you have a chance and the like, and that was that was a little tough for me. I I think at one point I I had a part in the mission where it was really really difficult to get through, and I hadn't realized it. But um, you know, I mean, that's that's what the the developers are for. Hopefully, they can go through and and kind of nerf that stuff. But um, it was really cool, though. I mean, I it, it was a, it was a different kind of thing for me, and it's I, I like the fact that now I can say, well, I actually wrote for a video game, you know. Right. That 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 impresses the uh, the college students in my classes a lot more than uh, I you know I've written comic books. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, also I would wrote... have to say the comics are way cooler though, as far as for I don't okay, know. Yeah, me they're both cool, but um, I like both. <laughs> it's yeah. cool when you get to adapt your things to video games too. Just getting to adapt it to any format, man. Yeah, I mean, getting to change it to anything like yeah. that. I think definitely, if you can, if you can be in a market and then take what you have and adapt it to a totally different market, like that. Especially with comic books, and regardless of what medium it is, whether it's a video game, movie, TV series, that's that's always something that I think would be a hell of a challenge too, though, man. I'm surprised that there wasn't more of a pain in the ass about that than just keeping the fucking levels of the players to where, you know, you weren't getting your ass kicked when you played the game because you made the boss way too powerful. It's a good boss. Well, they, they you know, they really, when you, when you do the stuff for video games, because they're, they're worried about, you know, franchise and everything, they, they really kind of keep a, a tight leash on you. So you, you have to kind of have everything approved, um, but um, they gave me a lot of freedom with the with the city heroes thing, which was nice. Um, <clears throat> and I I mean I I used every bit of it. There was a certain amount of um, like space that you were able to use, um, you know, like information wise. And I think I I drew it out to the the very last bit. I mean I just crowded that thing with so much. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff in there. Unfortunately, it probably doesn't exist anymore since City Heroes went offline. I'd like to think that somewhere it's still, you know, is, I, I don't want it to be just floating out in outer space or something because I put a lot of work into it. But, I mean, that's kind of one of the differences. I mean, if I if I do a comic, right, it's functionally there's probably always going to be at least one copy of it out there. Mm. But, um, yeah, with the video games, I mean, if something happens and, you know, One's got it somewhere on the dark web. You can buy it. <laughs> I'll get it next time I buy my guns. <laughs> you also wrote Witchblade, which is one of our favorite, well, one of my favorite series. 
What was that like? Yeah. That, well, that was really odd for me because I, I'd never really read Witchblade. And um, they... Wait, um, wait, you wrote Witchblade without ever having read it? <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I had done, like, Common Grounds at the time, and I don't know if I had done City Heroes yet or not. I don't think so. But, uh, that's, again, that's when uh, Jim McLaughlin was still in charge. And they needed... I think some fill-in issues. It was it was before Ron Mars came on board, but um, just right before I think. And so they they needed to do some fill-in issues, and and he had asked me if I would uh, do a like a two-issue arc. And yeah, if if you read those issues, it's mainly about the villain, the the super villain in the piece, because I wasn't really familiar with the book, and. Uh, so I, you know, I kind of boned up on it as as much as I could, and then, uh, like I said, I I kind of made it more about the villain who I created. So I was able to do it. You know, I um, <clears throat> the only thing that I, I kind of made sure I did in in, in the script is since Witchblade had you know had been seen as as a real T and A kind of book before, I purposely wrote the thing in such a way that she was you know fully clothed um, throughout the thing. And then, unfortunately, they <laughs> the uh, the first issue of the two issue arc they put one of the most scantily clad Witchblade covers ever <laughs> on the book. <laughs> and then the the second the second issue of it, I think it was something like issue seventy six and seventy seven. Yeah, yes, and, it was. Uh, the, the second issue of the arc, she's not so scantily clad, but on the cover it looks like she's sitting on the toilet. <laughs> um, They'll show right. you, huh? Yeah. Thought you got over, yeah. thought you got one over at the editor in chief over there, Top Cow. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> they should have called. They should have called that issue two witch blades in a cup. I think. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen they're rebooting Witchblade now, which is kind of cool. They're starting to bring back Top Cow. Kind of went away from the soup, like they're kind of the, like darkness and Witchblade for a while. They went some more science fiction, but. They're coming back with the witch blade and the darkness, I believe. But uh, Troy just put a terrible fucking image in my mind. All right, can I just point that out? <laughs> Gotta make a meme about it now. All right, what the fuck? <clears throat> Two witch blades, one cup. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That was that was that's because then you got the metal because the witch blade and, just, and it, it just made a really weird image. Whatever. I really. Really need to fucking move past that, man. I really do. So you've got that. You've done that, man. What do you got coming up, Troy? You working on anything right now? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm working on some pitches at the moment. We'll have to see. You know, I. I, I don't know. I. <clears throat> I I've got a, a kind of an odd attitude on comics. I guess I should probably push myself more. But you know, I'm not really much of a networker or anything. And pretty much all of the the comics that I've done so far, the professional ones, you know, I've I've had editors and stuff come to me about them and okay. which may not be a good thing because i i've never really gotten into the habit of really getting out there and trying to sell myself but um which is why i probably you know haven't had more comics published i mean it, they just kind of happen along and um <clears throat> sometimes i'll go like a few years without having anything published i i mean i you know i've i've had a few little things published here recently i did some stuff for the uh, hero initiative and stuff like that. Um, but um, yeah, at the moment, I'm just kind of working on pitches. And part of my problem is that, it, and this is, this is where we get into philosophical life stuff, I guess. But, I, you know, I, I have all these things that I want to do. And then once I kind of feel like I've accomplished them, I'm not as driven about them. So, you know, I, I, I was doing my comics and stuff. And then I ended up like, you know, getting nominated for the Eisners and things. And I just, you know, it's one of those deals where I kind of feel like, well, I've proven that I can write a decent comic book, you know. So yeah, I on. guess I'm, 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 I'm a little less driven to try to prove to people that I can, but um, hopefully I'm still able to write a good comic book these days. No, no. I, no. I enjoy no, I just want to, I just want to be a dick, but put a real fire under your ass, Troy. Now I want to <laughs> see you make a comic book that turns into a movie or a TV series. Could you say that again? You got to get nominated, or you got to make a comic book that gets turned into either a movie or a TV series. 
movie or a TV series. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've thought about that, too. Eisner, you, you, you know, the only, the only problem is, and this is the God's honest truth, what I have found is that whenever I have set out to do a comic that is really, you know, where, where I think to myself, wow, this is going to be a really popular comic, it's really going to sell well, blah, 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 it, you know, it's never really come to fruition. Um, and it, it's just, it's the, the stuff that I've had that's been successful is the stuff where I've said to myself, well, I'm going to write a comic that I would like to read. And, you know, and a lot of my comics, too, I'm telling you, they, they should have been failures. Because if you look at Common Grounds, I mean, when I, when I first wrote, wrote them in the early 90s, you know, uh, the people who did read them liked them, but they said, you know, I don't see how this can keep going. Because it's just, you know, it was just a comic where you've got superheroes and villains sitting around, you know, drinking coffee and talking. And, you know, n almost no action in it whatsoever. This should have been a recipe for, fa for failure. <laughs> but but it wasn't, you know. And then Twilight Guardian, I mean, it's like I said, it's it's about as mundane as, as possible. It's a woman walking around her neighborhood neighborhood every night. You know, she's not, there's no crime going on. It's all really street-level kind of normal stuff that happens in your neighborhood at night. Um, and, you know, and again, I mean, it, it won the, the pilot season competition. So really the stuff that works is the stuff that I, I have faith in, you know, the stuff that I... I, I can bring a certain confidence to it and say, you know, this this might not sound like a saleable idea, but I know that I can write dialogue. You know, I know that I can make an interesting character. So that's that's what I go with. And you know, and part of the reason for that is that I cannot plot to save my life. I mean, I am just not good at plot. And in fact, I can't even follow most plot. And you know, my girlfriend is much the same, and we'll. We'll be sitting around watching something, and we're t both totally lost because we can't follow the plot. And we'll turn to each other and well, what happened here? And I don't know. You know, what, if so, you know, if we if we were at a movie theater, we would probably want to turn to, you know, the guy next to us, a total stranger, and say, "Excuse me, sir, can you tell us what's going on?" That's crazy. <laughs> but so um, you're not a Game but, of Thrones so fan, then. That's the reason that most of my stuff is so centered around character and dialogue. It's just because. You know, I'm not much of a plotter. I mean, I, I don't think I could ever write like a an espionage thing or something. It's just not something that I can do. Right on. That's, Interesting. I, that's that's just that's kind of crazy, man. I've never like like I obviously like I said I so I assume you're not like into like Game of Thrones and style shit like that then. You know, actually, we're we're still planning on sitting down and binge watching Game of Thrones. I've I've literally never seen it. I mean. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's on my huge list of stuff to eventually watch, but, um, yeah, I, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's something that I don't have much of a head for. And, um, and I really envy those people who do, you know, I think about like, well, I mentioned earlier, uh, Jonathan Hickman, uh, who is no relation to me whatsoever, but there's a guy that really can, you know, understands plot and he can, you know, run through plot and stuff. And I just can't. So I, I end up writing these stories that are, you know, completely character driven. And I guess overall not much happens in them. I don't know. With 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 common grounds the for me the the challenge was always taking people just sitting around talking and giving it a certain dynamic quality. So you want to keep reading it even though, you know, there's not really anyone punching anyone else. So That's what I kinda liked about that in Twilight Guardian just it's so different that it's unique, you know, it's just its own thing. That's what I always enjoyed about them. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I I haven't had too many chances actually to write like action scenes and stuff. The City of Heroes arc, I, I did because I, I kind of structured it like an old uh, 70s Justice League kind of story where you would have the, the team of characters break up into like groups of two or three or whatever. And, you know, then they would go on their individual missions and They'd end up fighting and stuff, and that was that was different. I mean, it's it's weird having written comics for so long and never really written much in the way of fight scenes. So that was kind of cool. So let me ask you then, man. <laughs> like when you're going to sit and read a comic, like first of all, what like what was like initially when you got into comics? What were the like your favorite books? What were your go-to books as a kid? And what are your go-to books nowadays? Like what are you like looking forward that's coming out and that has been recently? 
<clears throat> well, okay. Let me let me uh, go with the second question first because it's the easiest to answer. I've got to admit I read very few comics these days. Um, part of the reason is because I can't afford them. <laughs> but it's it's also the fact that, and I and again I hate to say this because it makes me sound like a, you know, just a mean old guy, but I started losing interest in comics, oh probably about the time of DC's first crisis, like in '85 I guess it would have been, um, and it's again it's because the the characters. Um, you know, not only did they, they start changing the characters, but they functionally said all the stories that you have read before this never actually happened. And, and in fact, I, re- I, I remember being at the uh, at a Chicago convention, uh, the Chicago Con, um, just after that happened. And I was I, will, I was talking to an editor who will remain nameless, but he was an, an editor at DC at the time. And I remember talking to him about it and saying, you know, it really bothers me that, that, that these characters that I've been reading for you know, all this time, that their adventures never even happened and, and they just don't even exist. And he said, well, you, you know, you can always get your, your old, old comics out of the closet and read them if you want to. And I felt really kind of, you know, slapped in the face by that, you know, um, not just because I don't keep my comics in the closet, but... Also because I, I kind of felt like, well, yeah, but I'd still like to be able to read these adventures of the characters that I, you know, that I really liked. Um, so <clears throat> that kind of bothered me. That was about the time that I started thinking about writing my own comics, just because I wanted there to be more comics out there that, I, you know, that I would enjoy myself. Um, so I don't really read a lot of comics these days. I, I try to keep up on what's going on. I you know I know that Iron Man is a black woman I guess I don't <laughs> yeah it kind of got weird recently uh, wait last yeah, couple years got real weird did you so, say Iron um, Man is a black woman yeah it's like uh, her name's Iron Heart it's like a fourteen year old black girl with an afro yeah it's real I mean they basically diversified every hero in Marvel now well they used I mean, to I don't know if they're that's fine just I just didn't it. know that at all and it kind of like I I think Iron Man I think Tony Stark <laughs> you know that's just the fucking how it is. I yeah, whatever. Does, does the char- does the character have like an an armored afro? Because I, I I don't know if I've <laughs> actually seen her or not. I don't even know if she's even in the armor. I think she controls her. I I I kind of quit. I mean I I'm kind of the same way you are. I mean I, I except I I waited a little later, but I used to really love the comics and they just kind of just started throwing shit. They just they threw everything in a bucket and shook it up and whatever came out came out. And I'm just like all right. Like they, like Marvel, just basically like during the Secret Wars, the last Secret Wars. There's been like four, by the way, but they just threw every every unit multiverse into one big war, and then like they, it just it was just one giant mess. I'm like, well, there's no continuity anymore. Everybody's either black or female, which I you know I don't have a problem with, but you can't just like slap a name on a new character and expect them to have the same accolades as Captain America or whatever. You know, in my opinion. You got yeah. you should you should either create new characters or build them up. You can't just be okay. Yeah, you're Spider Man now. Like no, you can't do that. At least for me, you know well, that's how I, I feel. I, I don't I don't even understand the people who who do think that that's a good idea because it seems to me like that's more insulting than anything. Right. I mean, rather than taking the time to build a new character and you know actually making them you know whatever they are. Just it's that's basically you know like saying okay we're going to give you your brother's you know leftover clothes or something <laughs> right. and, you know I mean it's 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 kind of insulting to say we're going to give you the identity of this this previously white man I mean it, it yeah it just doesn't work for me I mean, um, like Ice Man gay just to get more gay readers and I'm just like well you could have just made created a new gay character you didn't have to be like you're gay by the way now it's just like okay. Yeah, kind of weird. Well, yeah, and yeah, they, I mean, they've done that with any number of characters. Green, the Golden Age Green Lantern, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's. They made just, the Golden I, Age Green Lantern gay. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that. all those years that he had a girlfriend in the Golden right. Age comics, she was a beard. I guess. Right. right. That's just like Iceman. Iceman had like was sleeping with Rogue for years, but apparently that doesn't count anymore. They couldn't touch Racer. I mean, I know in the comics they figured out a way. I don't know, man. Blah, blah, blah. They, they said that with Harley Quinn, too, just because she hung out with Poison Ivy. I'm like, what? She, 
You mean her relationship with the Joker didn't count now? Like, she's just a lesbian now? Hey, hey, the Joker was an abusive prick, all right? Yeah, but I mean, not, not the like he was Joker. <laughs> he wasn't hiding it. He... <laughs> well, I mean, he met her with his doctor in a sane asylum. You can't I'm really blame saying, him. I'm just that could have fucked her head up a little. And now she, she was likes a doc- the She was his doctor. To... Like, you should have hey. her shit straight. Yeah, she should have been a sound mind. Well... I'm not saying hey. it ain't that bitch's fault. Right? I'm not saying, but I'm saying she Patrick fell Gus, for it. He was crew loose as himself, but I'm joking. And to answer your your other question, because I out of completeness, I'm a comic guy, so I have to think in terms of uh, completing the set here. Um, no, the, you don't follow a plot. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Well, what I was going to say, you asked about the, the first comics that really oh, got yeah, me interested. Yeah. I know, sure. I just um, had to fuck with you. No, it's okay. The, the first one that I, that I really remember um, appealing to me was uh, the original uh, Doom Patrol series, which is still probably my favorite all-time series. And it just, it was so cool. And again, I think the reason that, th- the books that have always appealed to me more than any other are the Super Team books. And I think it's for the same reason that I do what I do, because there's so much dialogue and the like in them, and characters interacting with other. And in fact, part of the reason that I ended up doing Common Grounds is because of those old uh, Justice League, Justice Society crossover books. And there was always that one, you know, usually a, a one-page spread where the characters from the JSA and the JLA were shaking hands. Um, and they usually didn't have dialogue, and I always thought to myself, man, I wish, you know, we could hear what they were saying to each other, because it would probably be fascinating. So that was part of the inspiration for Common Grounds, and then there was a, there was a story in Marvel 2 and 1, I don't know if you would remember, but where the Thing and Sandman, the villain Sandman, um, were sitting around a bar talking for the whole episode, or for the whole issue, and that was, you know, and that would have been in the 80s sometime, so and that really inspired me. And then you kind of combine that with I, in the in the early '80s, I started reading uh, American Splendor, the Harvey P. Carr book, mm-hmm. and uh, that really affected the way that I wrote superhero stories, because you know it was all these little mundane adventures, and it was all just dialogue and Harvey working at the you know VA hospital and all this stuff, and and that and, and they were such great stories that they really affected me, and so I kind of started incorporating that into comics. Um, but yeah, the, I think that the earliest stuff that really got me was the, was the, the various super team books, the Justice League and the Avengers, anything written by Steve Englehart, cause he had been doing both of those books and they were really good. Um, and I don't know that the, the very first comic I remember reading was Captain America and it was the, the first issue of Captain America after he had left um, Tales of Suspense, and they'd gotten his own book. So it would have been, wow. I think, issue issue 100, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was the first comic I remember actually reading as a kid. And, and you uh, just, don't have it now, do you? Oh, yeah, I do, as, as a matter of fact. I still have it. Um, I've, I've got all the comics I think I have ever owned. I don't think I have lost or anything, any of them. And I've got, uh, I think, somewhere around 22,000 comics now. So... <laughs> right. um, but, uh, yeah, so Captain America is, people always ask me, well, if you were to write, like, a major character, because I, I tend to like, like, the second and third rate characters, but if I was going to write a major character, Captain America would definitely be one of my choices. Very cool. So I'm curious, then, being that you're a guy that's obviously, yeah, I mean, you're old school Marvel, DC, you're into all that, when you look at what they're doing right now, film property-wise... What do you think with them two major ones? Uh, as far as like the superhero movies and such? Yeah, as far as just how, and I mean more specifically as far as how Marvel is handling their properties as opposed to how DC is. And by that, I mean how Disney is handling Marvel's properties and how Warner Brothers is handling Disney's, or I mean how Warner Brothers is handling DC's. Well, <clears throat> I could be wrong, but I think the reason that Marvel overall has been more successful with what they're doing than DC has, it, it's not just a matter of competency, which probably is part of it, but 
if you look at the DC stuff and the Marvel stuff, what you see is that Marvel, for the most part, you, there are exceptions to this, but Marvel, for the for the most part, doesn't seem to be ashamed of the material. You know, I mean, you have a little bit of that early on. If you look at the early X-Men, like the first X-Men movie, um, you know, everybody dressing in a, a black leathery costume kind of right. deal. So, you know, it's it, trying to divorce it from superheroes to a certain extent. But Marvel hasn't been doing that as much in the, with the later stuff. If you look at Doctor Strange, for instance, he pretty much looks like he does in the comics. And they don't seem to be, you know, having to be ashamed of the material, aside from maybe joking around a little bit, you know. But DC seems to, and I haven't seen the Justice League movie yet, so I can't comment on it. But it, it you know, the DC movies have, for the most part, especially here more recently, it's like they're, you know, again, they're ashamed of the material to a certain extent. So everything tends to look darker. And, you know, it doesn't have to. I mean, if you looked at, like, the, the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, they were not dark at all. And, you know, and they were, well, at least the first two, you know, did really well. Um, and especially in this day and age, I don't think people are, people are a little bit more hip to stuff now. And I don't think they necessarily have to say, well, you know, we, we've got to make this look a little less comic booky. And and so the Marvel movies, I think, overall have looked a little bit more like, like an actual, you know, comic. And you don't get the feeling that, you know, you, you know you have to you hide at the back of the theater or something. And I that's how kind of how I feel more with the DC stuff. It's like they haven't really reconciled with themselves yet that it's perfectly okay to just do standard superhero stuff. People are not going to look at this and say, you know, oh, that... I mean, I guess you do have some of that stuff with Marvel because when the first Avengers movie came out, you had people complaining that that Captain America looked too bright on the screen. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think you're hearing that now, though. Man, look, yeah. all I know, all I know, I know what DC's problem is. Look, they did they did fucking Tim Burton's Batman, dark as shit, and then they went and ended up trying to put fucking nipples on Batman, and it went to shit. <laughs> and now they're like, well, we can't do kid friendly. Look, we tried to make it funny. With nipples on the bat suit, and look what happened, right? Obviously, well, the Tim Burton method look fucking works. Look what fucking well, it, old it, boy did with the Batman Begins trilogy. He just did. So they're like, we'll go dark. <laughs> do Do you remember the the Flash show of the nineties? Vaguely, was it? Yeah. the the Flash TV show on, in the nineties that they did with uh, John Wesley Ship or whatever his name was. If If you remember the show, right? That looked like Batman. They made that look like a Tim Burton thing. It was very dark for the Flash, hmm. which doesn't work for the character at all. Right. Um, you know, and it, you'll notice that the that the current version of the Flash on TV is a lot brighter. Hmm. But yeah, and from that, what I the, understand, way better than the um, movie version of the Flash as well. Could you say that again? I couldn't hear you. As, as far as, from what I understand, he's way better than the movie version of The Flash as well. Pro probably, yeah. yeah Although, that's what from I've what told, I hear... Yeah, I'm a fan I, of the I, series. I, like, the TV series, because The Flash is one of the few DC characters that I care for. I'm not a DC guy, I'll be fucking honest. Superman can fuck off. Like, I think he's one of the most terrible <laughs> characters ever fucking written. Well, see, you know, when I was, you know, growing up and in, in some of the interim years... Um, there was always that, well, you're a Marvel guy or a DC guy. And and I think there's still some of that. But, I, you know, I was never able to make up my mind because there were things I liked about both of them. I mean, I liked the fact that, that Marvel's characters, you know, had more kind of uh, developed characters. Yeah, and flaws, yeah. But, uh, you know, DC at the same time, I like the fact that, you know, I know you don't like Superman, but, I mean, to me, I, I always liked him as that kind of friendly policeman on the corner kind of guy, you know. Um, so there were things I liked about both of them. I could never really choose between, you know, one or the other, but, you know, I understand people that do. Um, yeah, I'm totally, if you made that choice, I'd be a little upset that Lobo and, uh, I could never read Garth Ennis' Hitman again, which, but like <laughs> short of that and maybe like two other books, if I really, really thought about it, yeah, that'd be bound it from DC. There's a lot of good books you haven't read from DC though, but... 
I'm, I mean, they I said mess with every them company, really. I never fucking read them, so I'm good. <clears throat> I feel you. you I'm know? a Marvel guy myself, but I've always liked DC and Marvel. Yeah. See, I, I'd buy fucking, uh, like I said, I'll go more the other. So wait, man, Troy, though, you said you really hadn't read, you really don't read much um, nowadays. Like, there's not even any independent comics or anything out there you pick up? You know, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll occasionally read something, but again, it's usually, I, I don't really frequent comic shops very much. Um, you know, I, I guess, like, I'm there on free comic book day just because usually they ask me to, you know, guest at a shop or something. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I don't buy a lot of comics. I mean, arguably I probably write more comics these days than I read. I don't know. Um, a lot of writers I've talked to and most of them that don't really read current events, you know, <laughs> not really their, their generation kind of, you know, they change the history too much. It's a lot yeah. different. Well, you know, uh, which is a strange thing to say because it's the the people who are currently writing comics that are, you know, changing right. everything. Um, I, I, and I never understand that. I never understand that because these are the characters that they, you know, grew up with and just love. And then the first thing they do once they get to DC or Marvel is to change the characters entirely. Makes a and, or whatnot. Well, <laughs> you know, that's, you know. that's part of the problem. That's the whole SJW thing. But it's more than that, too. And it's... Um, I don't know. It's a funny thing because the comics that I enjoy are the comics that were being written in the days when it was businessmen rather than fanboys who were running comics, you know, which right. which would seem to be counterintuitive. I mean, but for whatever reason, when when comics were being treated, you know, that way, when they were comics were not necessarily being written by people who, you know, grew up loving comics. But they seem to be better books overall. And then, you know, in the 80s, 90s, when you started having, you know, these fanboys start writing comics, it's, I don't know, it it's an odd kind of thing because it's almost like they had some secret hatred or something I get, I get, for these I, characters. I get what you're saying. That's kind of interesting. But I feel exactly, I know exactly what you're saying. That's a you very the business interesting People would be point. the ones changing stuff, and they're the ones, you know, yeah. Well, and, you know, it's, which may be part of the reason, too, that comics are selling so, I mean, it's funny because, you know, people now will will talk about comics, you know, selling decently. Well, of course, comics have not sold decently for decades now. I mean, you know, there was a time not, not that long ago when you would have comics selling a million copies. And, you know, now if you have a book that does, say, 50,000 copies, people are overjoyed about it. Um, and, you know, part of it is I, I think the comics have changed. I always put the, the main part of it, and this is, a, this is a weird thing to say, I know, but I think that, that one of the things that have really killed comic sales is the direct sales market. Because, you know, before that, you had so many kind of points of purchase, right? So if you, if you had a little kid that went into a grocery store or a drugstore with his mom, he, you know, he'd end up buying comics. And I, when I was a little kid, you know, my dad would go to, to Payless or someplace to, uh, to cash his check on a Friday night. He'd take me along and he'd let me pick out some comics, right? Well, these days, because of the direct sales market, about the only place you really see comics is in comic shops. Well, if you don't already read comics, what are the odds that you're going to wander into a comic shop, you know? Looking for pops. They're, they're just not... No, yeah, looking it, for it, fucking we, pops, They kind of turned the, the comic distribution thing into a ghetto in a way. You know, it's 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 sort of cut off from everything else. And again, if you if you haven't somehow stumbled into comics, you're probably not going to end up going into a comic shop and looking for them. That's that's one of the the few things that the stuff like the the superhero movies have helped with a little bit. You know, you do have people actually coming in and saying, "Hey, I'd like an Avengers comic or, or whatnot." But sales are still just a tiny fraction of what they were a few decades ago. I think part of it, too, is because we've talked about this on the show before. Like, we all do music, so we kind of relate the music industry with the comic industry, but it's so oversaturated anymore, you know, like, where there was only, like, you know, 100 books back in the day, now there's, like, 1,000 books, or, you know, that's sure. why there's, you know, everybody wants sure. to be a writer or an artist, or everybody wants to be a rapper or whatnot. So now it's just, like, 
Well, and that's, again, a more, that's... A lot more fish in the sea instead of a, you know... Yeah, and it becomes impossible to really keep up on everything. I mean, when I, you know, when I was a kid reading this stuff, you know, it within the small amount of money that I had, I could pretty much keep up on at least the superhero books from Marvel and DC because there were, really weren't very many of them, um, you know, comparatively speaking. And now, even, even if let's just say that you were only interested in Marvel, you know, how many books does Marvel come out with a month? Even you know, though, like, mean, one character, like yeah. Spider-Man or Wolverine or Deadpool, there's like, you know, 10 Jesus. issues of just that character. Yeah, well, not even months. that. Yep. If you look and at the fact that, like, fucking, in... take, like, the Onslaught series, like, which was done in the 90s, and if you wanted that whole series, it was probably 20 books, you know, 20 comics, I'd say, maybe maybe 25. Like, fucking, the, the first Civil War they did, which has been a while ago, that shit's over 100 fucking comic books, if you want every part of it. <laughs> Right. Well, and they, and again, you you have to realize that comics has always had a really high turnover rate. I don't know what it is now, but it used to be about three years. And a lot of times it would coincide with when boys were discovering girls and then comics kind of went out the window. Right. But if you've got, you know, again, you've, you've got to get folks generally interested in comics fairly early. And if, I mean, what's what's the average comic cost now? If you have to buy, you know, 20 comics just to keep up on something who can afford that i mean uh, you know a, a 15 year old these days trying to do that would have to be a crack dealer to try to keep right. up with it i used to say bruce wayne couldn't afford all the comics back in the you know, like... <laughs> eh, i mean yeah, it would, i get it would, what you're saying if you fucking he picked up every comic that was released on a weekly basis it would definitely at least put a little dent in that fucking pocket because i mean if you picked oh, up everything pretty die hard man weekly, it did it added up yeah, I mean, especially if you include graphics and all the bullshit and all the special editions and fucking big ass <laughs> illustration and all that shit that comes out, man. I mean, easy, you'd end up a couple grand a week. Fuck, you'd probably end up a grand in just books almost weekly. I wouldn't be surprised if you went through every every publisher. I mean, you know, including Dark Horse and Image, Top Cow, all that shit. Fucking, I, it would get ridiculous. Yeah, it's expensive now. I remember when books were like, when I was big into comics, it was like a dollar cover price, you know, and of course, now it's like three to four, three to five, just for one issue. Yeah, it's it's crazy, because, I mean, if you compare it to other things, it, it doesn't even out. When I first started reading comics, and again, this tells you how old I am, but, you know, that it was just around the 12 cent, you know, about right. to turn into 15 cent. Well, at the same time, you know, if you paid 15 cents for a comic, you could get a candy bar for about the same amount, right? So, but what's a candy bar cost today compared to a comic? It's not even close. Not a five dollar candy bar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a fun size. You, five dollar <laughs> candy bar. If I buy a five dollar candy bar, it better be you know a foot long, and there better be four dollars <laughs> taped to the back of it. So. <laughs> Hell I get what you're saying. Right. There better be four dollars taped to the back of it. What the fuck? We got Come break, you got any other questions for back. him? No, we haven't had a break yet. Well, I mean, what it's do up we to you. I'm just saying you usually do a break or two, and we got to do our other stuff. We got like 45 minutes still. Fine. Look, racers, like I haven't taken a break. No, I'm just, just saying we usually take a break. Straight. Union. It's, it's been a good show. Racer's demanding a break. I'm not demanding shit. Maybe Troy yeah, would take a break. Oh. Do you need I'm a break, cool whatever. Yeah. I just know we take at least a break. It's the halfway point. It's past the halfway point. I was trying to keep you on track. But that's kind of productive Man, wait, now because we're dude, talking about you, it. I don't fucking got no tracks, first off. You ought to fuck... Jesus Christ, you ought to fucking tune into the goddamn show last night. I swear, it started off the tracks, and it never got on them. And Troy, I will not, at least you're not getting asked, like, what would you do if you got fucking your opponent coming at you with a trash can lid covered in used condoms, you know, but... We can, eh. we can get with that. We can get to hit that after the break. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, get a, we'll get a some blood beyond the mad type questions beyond the break, perhaps. <laughs> really confused. Troy's gonna be like... 
What the fuck just happened? I am really, really, really fucking confused. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's the truth. Really, I'm just buying myself time because I'm like clicking <laughs> buttons and clicking buttons and whatever, you know. But fuck it, ladies and gentlemen, this is invisible. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way for a minute. But this is invisible by DKB. We'll be right back. All right, sir. Uh, except on YouTube or fuck, man. I said YouTube. It's Facebook. Whatever. Facebook. It'll be post soon. We'll fuck it. Y'all just get silence. Sorry. We'll be back.
Because we're going live on Facebook anyways, right? Live on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, what up? Yeah. Tell him to fuck off, DKB. No. How dare you? I'm joking. How dare I what? I'll, I'll do it. Dare uh, me. Nah. <laughs> I'm joking, man. Dare. I'll do We're it. Being sad. Off drugs. I'll fucking Don't do, do it. What? Hey, look. <laughs> First off, I was only coughing off this goddamn vape pen, man. It was like, uh, we're trying to switch to this off the of cigarettes. And I swear this thing makes me cough harder than smoke cool. a cigar. You got a rig. Understand it. It's grape. <clears throat> it is grape flavor, guys. And, uh, are we back yet? How long do we got? I already said we're live on Facebook. Facebook's not the tape radio. Look, see, Racer gets it. Facebook ain't a fucking radio. Oh! That's besides the point, though. Right. Yeah, hold on. I played a long-ass track. That's an untouchable mob. Yeah, by Project Born Project Mob. You can check that out right now on NoFucksGivenRadio.com. That's the track that's playing if you got the app or the website or, you know, however the fuck you streaming it if you ain't streaming it on Facebook Live. If you streaming it on Facebook Live, you having to listen to my ass ramble right now. And then you had to listen to silence be before shitty. that. That's shitty. Sometimes, yeah. Get the app. Look, even the DKB's like, yeah, it is shitty to listen to you ramble factor. I swear to God. <laughs> what a God. Yeah. Where did he would know. Racer and DKB hear me ramble regularly. But that's besides the point. <laughs> Man, I'm the mad rambler. You know you love it. I'm I'm just watching to cue this up, really, because we're because if you're on, like I said, well, technically, like, technically you're about to get the same show that No Fucks Given Radio is, ladies and gentlemen, just with video. I still don't know why the hell they want to watch my ugly ass face, guys. I really, really don't get it. Masochist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Points to Racer, but that's besides the point, because <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're live. No fucks given radio back. Super Nintendo episode 10, that's right. I am the, well, one of the hosts the Unknown Factory. I don't know what the fuck I was about to say, but I know I was about to say fucking something wrong, and I had to switch it. Sometimes my brain don't work right, guys. I'm sorry, Racer, DKB. It's just, it just, sometimes it misfires. It happens. That hurt. Oh, part of the natural oh, part, part of, of the... life. <laughs> That's how we roll. My brain misfiring is a natural part of life? That's kind of discouraging. I'm just saying, but that's besides the point. Yeah, motherfucker, because we got fucking... What? Wait. Ah. Ah. Wait. Yeah. See, I fucked up. <laughs> fucking... Yeah. Ah. ah. I'm dropping shit. I'm sorry. Fucking annoying. Too much shit. Right? Come on now. We're gonna Get fucking... back on the this track. This a hell of an interview, though. Please. This has been a hell of an interview with Troy Hickman tonight. Yeah, a bunch it of motherfucking was. Hoosiers, which is it random is. as fuck to have four Indiana. guys from one state on this radio ever. It's usually four people from four different states. That's what it was last night. And fuck, one of, them was in Port or one of them was in Puerto Rico. That's what's up. But, <laughs> for real, man, it's true, right? We got a couple final things we got to get to here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on Super Nintendo. I about said the no fucks given out, god damn it. I really did, but fuck it. Damn I got it right, and then I fucking fucked up and said I was about fucked it up, but whatever, right? But before we do that, up. Troy, is there anything else you want to get to? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I've been sitting here uh, during the break uh, playing with my rabbit, uh, which is not a euphemism, boy. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, sure. I got a, I got a, I've got a little rabbit uh, that lives here in the... Oh, sure. in the in the uh, living room with me, she's, uh, she's got a splayed uh, leg condition, so her legs stick out at odd angles. So I brought her in the house to live with me, and uh, her name is Wilson, and uh, she uh, she keeps me from taking hostages. So uh... <laughs> your cool. rabbit keeps you from taking hostages. <laughs> so your rabbit talks. She, to she you? calms me down and keeps me off the dark web. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No guns. Of mice and men, which way to go, George? <laughs> Whatever keeps you off the dark web, I suppose, that's fine. But, like I said, we do have two final things we always get to over here on Super Nintendo. Racer, you want to go with it? 
Uh, which one you would like to do? Top five? Oh, yeah, do that one first because I got a graphic set up for the second that I'm going to switch to. <clears throat> uh, My bad. I should have said that during the break, bro. It's all good. This episode, uh, this episode's top five are top five American cartoons. So pretty much any cartoon ever that's other than anime or whatnot. And uh, I'll go first. My top five would be number one, The Simpsons, just because that's my favorite show of all time. The classy. Uh, number that's two, funny. Batman animated series. One of my favorite right. shows of all. That's a you know the definition yeah. of comic book cartoons in my opinion. Number three, He Man, which that's my favorite cartoon of all time. Growing up, I used to watch it with my dad. Number four, the X Men '90 show, or the '90s X Men from Fox. And number five, I'd have to go Rick and Morty just because I like the humor. That's my top five. Good shit. Let's throw the guests down at the bus. Hey Troy, just off the top of your head, no prior prepping. What are your top five favorite American cartoons? Oh golly, uh, let's see. Um, do you remember Clutch Cargo? Do not. <laughs> no. Clutch Cargo was a cartoon where they basically used pictures, and then they would superimpose real human lips on them and make them talk. Oh wow. Yeah, it it it's the only cartoon that could give you oral sex. That's why it's number one. <laughs> um, let me see. Yeah, Batman the animated series would have to be up there too. That was a great show. Um, what was that? Uh, uh, Samson was that the name of the show? Young was it Young Samson? It's a. It was that cartoon from the '60s where you'd have the uh, guy riding around on his uh, scooter with his dog. And uh, he'd uh, take his uh, wristbands and clack them together, and he'd turn into a Samson, and he was super strong and stuff. And then the dog would turn into a lion that had laser vision. So, I mean, that's about as cool as it gets. Right. Um, I think I remember yeah. that show. Yeah, that was a great show. Um, it was a Hanna-Barbera show. Um, I used to, when I was a kid, I loved Wacky Races. Do you remember, yeah. do you know Wacky Races? Nice. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, all, the, all the different cars and... You know, each one had its own kind of theme, and that was a good one. Um, golly, American shows. I'm 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 weeding out all the stuff that's not like Speed Racer, or right? That kind of stuff. Um, oh, the Mighty Heroes. You probably, I, I, you guys probably don't remember that one. I'm guessing that was with it had like uh, yeah. Strong Man and Rope Man and Diaper Man, and it was <laughs> it was a very goofy one, but it was it was a good show. Did you just um, say Diaper Man? <laughs> diaper Man, yeah. You did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He didn't have a fetish or anything. He was an actual baby, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm drawing a little blank here right off the top of my head, but a, a lot of that kind of stuff, the, the like, late 60s Hanna-Barbera stuff, you know, the, the Herculoids or, you know, that kind of thing. You see um, the DC rebooted a lot of those comics. Did they? They made the Wacky Racers, and then they got Johnny Quest, and then they made like a Scooby Doo with like a hipster Scooby Doo with Jim Lee and stuff. It got kind of <laughs> the Wacky Racers was like it was kind of cool. I, I read the first couple issues, but it was like they made it like it. You know, they had the same characters, but they were more. They weren't cartoons. They were basically almost like James Bond villains. Almost, it's kind of interesting. That's, well, that's a pe little much. People do things. Right. <laughs> Man, all I know is, look, I'm going last because fuck this. I know what my list is. I'm going to give my wife's before I give mine even because she gave a fucking list of her top five cartoons. So I'm going to make DJ go next, though, because I don't want to have to fuck. I don't want to have to follow up, though, with motherfucking a cartoon that will give you oral. I, I want to hear, I hear show shows, then. Oh, look, DKB's like, give your wife's, motherfucker. I don't want to follow the cartoon that gives oral <laughs> shit that's not why right. yeah fine <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 fucking uh, the wife's the wife's five cartoons because she uh, i was going through doing this she's like here and she just started listening i was like fine i'll write yours down too uh she had to agree with rick and morty because racer that's a great choice that's a great cartoon if you don't watch it i don't know why the fuck you don't all right uh then bob's burgers which is honestly a family favorite over here at the fucking like household 
I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Cause who the fuck don't like a meat wad? Yeah. Right? And then old school Looney Tunes, you know? I assume you mean the old, old school Looney Tunes, right? Like, like old school, like, yeah, when we were kids, like, they didn't really give a fuck. They'd do whatever they wanted. And then that old school Looney Woodpecker. So, yeah. She didn't have a cartoon that would give you oral, but she did have a Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, An- Animaniacs was a great cartoon, too. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Key in the Brain. Yeah. DKB, before I, before I throw my list up, what you got? All right. Um, I'm going to go number five. I'm going to say Dexter's Laboratory. Ooh. That was always <laughs> on my show. Um, uh, we'll go number four. I'm going to say uh, Transformers. That's a good one. Uh, number three, G.I. Joe. Number two, Thundercats. Ooh. Another classic. Number one, I'm going to go with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Nice. 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 See, man. Yeah, I'm an 80s, wait, baby. Can I just say, when Racer told me this, I instantly was like, well, I want to pick some cartoons that I'll straight up go watch, like, right the fuck now. Like, I like I would, like, like just after the show, I'll go fucking sit and watch episodes of Not Shit I Watched as a Kid. Which is why my list is what the fuck it is, right? Um, and it, honestly, it's fairly close to my wife's. That's why I married her fuckers, you know? We got similar interests. Um, Rick and Morty. What? How the fuck? DKB, how are you not going to have Rick and Morty on your list? I don't watch it. I don't have fucking nothing. I, these are cartoons I grew up watching as a kid. Why the hell would I have a Rick and Morty above that? He doesn't watch cartoons. Cartoon. He doesn't watch TV, period. Because <laughs> it's right. dope. Because it's dope. DKB, that's why, right? So my so, first is so Rick and Morty. That so was my childhood. Fuck off. <laughs> well, be offended. Okay. This is top Sorry. five. He can do what he wants. This is you his can, top five. I, I, I fuck. Whatever. I I'm wasn't doing your top five. You the one I agree with. All right, let's do right. your top five. Rick All and right, Morty. Sir, no, okay, so no, Rick and Morty, right? Three, uh, two, whatever. And like I said, uh, Bob's Burgers is a favorite over here. They have mine easement as well. Um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, cause, cause man, I, I love that show. Brack number one, player. Hood G, right? Uh, number fucking the uh, number four for me is Archer, cause I man, I just love H. John Benjamin. Yeah, I guess one. really, like I, that dude. On that one. Yeah, <laughs> he, he fuck, one. he's funny in funny animated shit. shit. And then, and then I'll agree with you. Look, I I went old school on one DKB, and I agree with you. And it's the thing that said my mom made me violent, which I totally don't agree with. That's a different point. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. They do violent. That's what my I don't know, man. That's what, what, what she you said. A foot soldier. <laughs> I think you yeah, can make some money well, off that because you're pretty crazy right now. I'm, sure. I'm a I'm a I'm a fucking real type of mother. I'm a real type of motherfucker that follows people. Let me tell you, I'm the foot soldier type. Yeah, evil good, Shredder attack. Apparently, it wasn't such a good comic book. I but would. The comic see, was a lot different than the cartoon. It was a lot more violent. Yeah, I would love to read the original comic books. I've never got a chance. I've read some of the uh, later ones put out by IDW. Uh, they were entertaining, in my opinion. Everything that I read from IDW, but that was way later in like the '90s and early 2000s. Um, the yeah, comics I, I have a few of them. They yeah. all—they didn't all have colors. They were all just all wore red. They all had wet red uh, bandanas, and then they just basically destroyed. Like they just yeah. killed shit. They wore yeah. a red bandana. <laughs> and if memory serves me properly, in the original comics, the only thing that was colored was the red bandana. Uh, Thanks. That was black and white, I think. And then the was covers. Okay? Had, I thought that cover covers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I thought they just colored that point. I couldn't remember. And again, this. I've never, those comics are fucking expensive as shit anymore. And they, yeah, they are something that's fairly violent. That's something the entertainment industry does, though. They take a property and tone down the fuck of it. They did the same thing with Jim Carrey the Mask. Go read that comic. It's violent as shit, right? It is, man. But hey, talking about violence, right? We got a violence left, gentlemen. We got this versus battle we've been doing. And we're down to the semi fucking finals. The final four. Yeah. Right. Right? So, 
I'm a man. I'm gonna I'm run through real quick how we got here, right? Right. And y'all actually, f- fuck that. Y'all can see how we got here, right? If, if y'all oh, look Troy, at the video, Troy it's right can't here. See it. Yeah, you can see it, or you can go and look at the graphic, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this on the radio, the graphic is probably <laughs> on that page. If it's not, I'll make my wife put it there. Um, <laughs> that way it is, and you can see the full graphic and how we all got here. But our first semifinal match is Hellstorm, who I'm really fucking surprised made it to this point, guys. I'm not going to lie. He's the son of Satan. He's a badass. All right. I, I didn't expect him to make it this far. Versus Vamprella, who's another one. I honestly didn't expect to make right. it through who she did. But she did. Tough one. That's why we have battles. <laughs> like, I, I'm really honestly surprised. So, Troy, since you hung around with this man, let's ask you first. You got Hellstorm of the Marvel Universe, and you got Vamprella. Eh? Who do you think's taking well, that? They're just I, in a room. I, One of them ain't getting I, out. <laughs> I'd probably have to go with Hellstorm. And, well, for a couple of reasons. One, because Uncle Raffi is a friend of mine. Um, but also... What what does Vampirella do? I mean, she basically stands around and poses. I, <laughs> she does I mean, do that very well. When I was like 13, I would have picked Vampirella, you know, for the <laughs> obvious reasons. But um, I, does she have, I mean, I guess she's a vampire, so she probably has vampire powers, right? Real quick, basically, though. Yeah, hey, no. Super strength and I, I see your point, himself. Kurt. I just got to ask, do you think she'd have taken Lady Death? <laughs> yeah, I'm still well, holding a grudge over that shit. Lady Death is going to smother any opponent she has. So thank you, God damn it! But whatever, nobody he's still bitter. He's that. still bitter. So <laughs> that's that's who that should be. That's who they thought. God damn it! It should be Lady Death versus fucking Hellstorm. That's another well, point. T Hasty was using his MK Ultra mind control. Hey, I picked I picked two over the host. Whoever that month's host was, so that's why I picked Vampirilla. I like both, though, for obvious reasons. But anyways, Troy got Tell Storm. Storm. What, what about you, DKB? I would say Hellstorm, too. Not that I really know much about each, but he is the son of Satan. I'm sure he has magical powers that will defeat a vampire. He does have a trident, too. She doesn't have any... Yeah, I'm going to have to go yeah, well, too. Yeah, he can sit down yeah. in the chair and just swing his trident. That's <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a clean sweep because I, I fully agree. He can only stand there and pose for so long. Yeah, yeah, that bitch is going to try and <laughs> outpose. She's going to try and pose her way out of that. and do, I don't know. Maybe if she just strips naked and distracts him and then rips his throat out. But that's her only chance, and I just don't think that would work either. Yeah. Never know. Yeah. No. All right. Hellstorm moves on to the final. Hellstorm moves on to the final. How how surprising is that? I'm Uncle whatever. Raff, I'm still proud. bitter about that lady death shit. Let's not. Let's not. It was Hellstorm Uncle versus Vampirella and Hellstorm won, but it should have been Lady Death and Lady Death should have won. This one's for Uncle Raffy. That's why we did it. That's, so you think Hellstorm would have beat Lady Death? That, that one. Battle, actually. <laughs> We ain't going to speculate about that battle because that's something I didn't even start to weigh because I would have done research in that because I know what Lady Death's powers are and I've done research into Hellstorms. I don't know. That's a fucking toss-up, but it didn't happen because y'all fucking said some bitch-ass vampire would beat the Queen of Death and shit. Don't get all bitter about it now. You weren't bitter about it fucking three months ago. I was bitter about that shit when it happened, and I have been ever since. Don't lie, Racer. Yeah, man. It's all right. So the next next battle, though, in the semifinals, yeah. That second battle in the semifinals is the Silver Surfer. Yeah, that's right. Versus that thing DKB said. You ain't gonna say it. No, it's that well, you say it. I don't. I can't pronounce that shit you properly. Say it. Let Troy say it. He knows it. Hopefully, both versions. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Mixiespitalik or Mithilplik. Um Troy said, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> it, it, it's 
for me, by the way, it's uh, it's going to be that's who it's going to be, Mitzel Blick. Um, just because he's, uh, we have no idea how powerful he is. He could be like you know, to put it in Marvel terms, like beyond or level. Um, so I I would have to think he could beat the server. Yeah. It's a good battle, I feel, but I kind of agree with Troy. Couldn't he just banish him to his back to his dimensions? Or would that not count as a defeat? Well, I, I don't. Could the Silver Surfer uh, get him to say his name backwards? Possible. I guess he could do like Superman did in that one cartoon where he made a jet stream of it with the silver, like a like a cloud, like a. Crop duster, but I don't know. He's gonna lay some chemtrails to it's trick him. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> right. But he is a he is a figment of your imagination. So he would also be a figment of Silver Surfer's imagination. Man, that's tough. That's tough for Surfer to win. Yeah, I don't think with the extent of that dude's powers, I don't think the Surfer has much of a chance. I don't. <laughs> Razor put like the unstoppable force in this. I do. Right. Like, what the fuck, Razor? How are you gonna put that thing DKB said in as a fucking like? He just automatically pretty much won. Well, I just picked crazy characters. I mean, we got our space in the tournament. We had darkness. Yeah. We had Sinestro. Our space was I mean, in the round. Our space was in the second round. <laughs> right. Our space won. Got to the second round, right? He did. But, you know, he really. Our space made it to the second round, yeah, and then he had to face the Silver it. Surfer. Yeah. Kind of unfair shit is that? I think the next tournament that? we're each going to pick like five, and then we'll have Mix, Mixie Plick or someone else as the champion or something. We'll have five people each. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Oh no, Mixie. I have a. Oh, we'll have to discuss that more off air though. Yeah, but right. Hey, right. Man, there's part of me that's like it's storm. episode ten. We ain't coming back till the new year. I have think we should finish this versus off. You guys want to? No. Uh, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. So, so, it's, so, so, it's, so it's that thing DKB said versus Hellstorm? Nope. I'm, a Satan versus, uh... <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a... I'm pretty sure everybody hands down agrees with who wins this, right? Right. Yeah. I think so. DKB, if you're mixed. gonna put gods in the fucking verses, put a couple. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll make that. We'll have an interesting tournament next. We'll have each each host pick a couple. But yeah, but there are there are characters, not even that powerful characters, that could beat Mixias Pitalek, yeah. right? Like say Kilgrave, the Purple Man, could mind control him to say his own name backwards and send him back to his dimension. No, wait, my my wife's bitter, I want to point out, mm-hmm. and wants to know, Troy, do you think Doctor Who could take him? Hmm. Well, he could put his sonic screwdriver up his ass until he says his name backwards. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think he's a real doctor. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he's and a podiatrist. On that note. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I honestly think it's a hell of a one to end on. Uh, Razor, final thoughts? Uh, just thanks, Troy, for coming to the show. And we appreciate the cool interview he gave us. That's about it, really. Don't really have much to say. <laughs> DKB, final thoughts? Yeah, yeah, same thing, man. Thanks, Troy, for coming on. Great show. Top five. Pretty good. I like American cartoons. And then there's and, that uh, thing. Yeah, the, the the battle's over now. Mr. Mixia's pit lick, or however the fuck you say his name. He's a grand champion. I'll have to make a graphic for it. Give him a belt. Give him a uh, Super Nintendo wrestling belt. Yes! <laughs> yeah. And then we somebody's got to take that. I don't know who we're going to find that's going to take that from that asshole. It's going to have to be like the Beyonder. Fuck, man. Hey, God damn, Troy, you're right. Troy, final thoughts before we cut up out of here? Uh, you know, just uh, thanks for having me on. And um, uh, if there's anyone out there that uh, wants to hire me for anything. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's about it. Had a good time. Uh, 
uh, really a fan now. I'll be listening to the show from now on. So, Hell yeah, Troy. It has been a pleasure. And this, ladies and gentlemen, has been episode 10 of Super Nerd Tendo. Make sure you tune in. Yeah, tomorrow we've got uh, Green Jello. Yeah, Green Jello on the No Fucks Given Hour. And then also make sure you catch myself uh, this Friday live in Ohio. And then I know you can catch the Smash Bros. When in Kokomo? 14th at Front Row Live in Kokomo, Indiana. Yeah, the 14th at Front Row Live in Kokomo, Indiana. You can go out and catch them live as well. So get out. Support this shit. Support the underground. Whether it's comics, wrestling, music, we don't give a fuck. This is no fucks given, ladies and gentlemen. And I am the unknown factor. Have a good night, y'all. Later. See you. Super Nintendo. Start the server. We are still live on Facebook, though, ladies and gentlemen. Until right now. Have a good night, y'all. Yeah. Later.